My check one, two. Hello. What up? How y'all doing? Just wait for some, um, wait for some people to come in. I'm sort of on time. Ha! <laughs> Finks, Ian, James, Nube, Kempe, DJ McMahon. Sorry if I fuck your name up there, mate. Mark, Phil, Top Cat, uh, Spanner. Spanner in the house. Yes, indeed. Welcome. Good day. It's Friday. Uh, Jonathan, Martin, good evening, Sean, cheers DJ, thanks dude, really appreciate that mate, thank you buddy, appreciate that, uh, Pops, Master CPU, Sam, out of hospital feeling a lot better, oh good to hear mate, good to hear buddy, uh, Sean, Electro Rep, Ian, yeah, I did see that message earlier on and um, well, I fell asleep, to be honest. But thank you, Matt. I really appreciate that. That will make a good video, that will. Uh, yeah, really appreciate that, buddy. Sebastian, Cam. Hello, hello. Uh, John on Twitch. Welcome, buddy. How's it going? How are you doing? What probe do I use to take readings like diode and current? Um, I use um, some precision probes. I can grab a link if you want me to grab a link to the probes I use uh, off uh, Amazon. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can find them. Uh, do, 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 do. Right, here they are. Might not stay long as it's late. No worries. I appreciate you stopping by anyway. I was just watching your last video from yesterday. Ah, yeah, that was a live stream. Right, I just posted a link to that, uh, to the probes that I use. Uh, who else do we have? We have Nube. Um, I'll just reply to you, but never mind. Pops, Steve, Dylan, uh, Felicia. Uh, been the soldering technician where I work, and I'm still learning a lot from watching you. Awesome, mate. Yeah, um, hopefully one day you do get to that point where you can start your own repair business. That's awesome, buddy. Uh, Stewie, welcome. Always going about how ugly you are. You're not ugly, mate. You are exotic. Exotic. <laughs> Why did I say that, exotic? <laughs> I won't go that far, mate, but never mind. Uh, yeah, that's why, because he spelt it wrong. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, JC, welcome, mate. Uh, thank you, DJ. I really appreciate it, mate. Not feeling very well. Oh, what's up with you, Ellis? Welcome, by the way. Hope you feel better soon, mate. CG, Guten Uh Andrew, Tom, Mr. Bassey, Wolfstar. Did you get anywhere with the PS5 from yesterday? Uh, no, I haven't carried on with it, mate. I've been really busy today. I haven't even been at my desk most of the day. Cheaper alternative to an Atom, you could get something like a Yiwa, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend saving up. Um, you could get something like, uh, let me find it. Uh, these are pretty generic. Guten Abend, yes, indeed. Indeed. Uh, yeah, I just posted a link to that, mate. Um, you can get something like that, but I'd, I'd recommend, if you can, just save up and get a, an Atom, mate, honestly. Get an Atom with a TS100 or a uh, um, T12. Paul, how's it going, mate? 
Headache and feel and feel loke. I don't know what that means, mate. Feel oh feel, feel like throwing up. All right, fair enough. Yeah, hope you get better soon, mate. Get an early night, sit in a dark room. That's what usually works for me. Fucked my switch port with it. Yeah, they're not very good. They're not great. Um, honestly, I would save up and get an Atten if I was you, mate. Have you thought about buying lots on eBay, like Tronic Fix? Um, I do sometimes. I do sometimes buy, buy lots. How much hours do I work? I don't count, mate. I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I wouldn't want to count because, uh, well, in terms of actual repairs, I don't know. It depends on how much I've got in, but uh, I do other stuff as well, like replying to emails, packaging, packaging parcels, inventory, admin work, that sort of stuff. Like I do loads of different stuff. I use a Hakko, uh, John, uh, Hakko FX 951. Uh, Post a link to that just so you know which one it is. Uh, it's a pretty expensive soldering iron that I use, but um, they're definitely worth it. Definitely, definitely worth it. Oh, server's on here. Hello, server. Matthew, subscribe with Prime. Thank you, mate. I really appreciate that. I just posted a link to the soldering iron, I, soldering iron that I actually use, but it is a pretty expensive one. Um, not always, newbie. Um, the black probes on ground, if you're, um, if you're testing resistance, if you're testing in diode mode, then your red probe will be on ground. Your positive side will be on ground. What do you do for the customer if you break something of theirs? If I break something and it's my fault, replace it. Always, always replace it, even if it means losing money, because it's the right thing to do. Um, so the thing you have to think about with business is you can't look at business as profit and loss on an individual basis, you know, like an individual transaction. So let's say I do 10 repairs and I lose money on one of them. Uh, if I lose money on one of them and I sit there and focus on just that one repair and say, oh, for fuck's sake, I've lost money, blah, blah, blah. Can't believe I've lost money. Kicking myself. I'm in, I'm in down in the dumps, all of that kind of thing. You're never going to survive in business. You have to look at it on a monthly, quarterly, or a yearly basis and say, right, have I made money this month? Am I in profit? Have I made enough to feed my family? Have I made enough to make ends meet? Blah, blah, blah. Um, when you focus on that, you'll do a lot better in business. You can't focus on just an individual transaction. Like sometimes I'll lose money on postage and I'm just like, meh, whatever. But then sometimes I'll, I'll make a little bit of money on the postage because it's cheaper than, I've, than it's actually quoted on the automatic postage calculator. So it's like, yeah, swings and roundabouts. Use JBC. JBC are pretty reputable, yeah. Uh, Matthew, I'm good, thanks, mate. How are you, buddy? Uh, Mark, thank you, mate. Welcome, buddy. Can you please hit Phil if he sings? No, no, no. She won't hit me and you know now. Because you love me. Popsy. And I'll get all my tools and fix, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear. 120 quid up this month point and stuff selling on eBay. Mate, profit's profit. Profit is profit. Have I tried Valium? That'll stop depression. And I don't do stuff like that, mate. I'm not depressed anyway, definitely not. I'm always happy. Singing indeed. Ha! Jess, how's it going? Uh, OT, how's it going? Chris Hitox, uh, Hiscox, sorry. Working on a, um, can I unmute yet? <laughs> Paddy, welcome. Mark, welcome. Um, we're working on the Xbox One X with trace damage. Uh, no worries, Nuba. Anytime I can help, mate. Anytime I can help. <laughs> you love me really, Mark. Joseph, how's it going, mate? Sounded depressed? No. Here, just shut up. It'll take a lot more than that to shut me up, mate. 
You need to add a few zeros onto the end of that. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I appreciate it. Sarah's all right, I think. <laughs> Sarah's all right, I think. We say good evening, mate. Sounds like Susan. Looks like Susan Ball, but sounds like a cement mixer with a brick in it. Oh, no, that ain't nice, is it? That ain't nice at all. You know what? You know, when I get that cable, I'm going to snap it up just to spite you. Just for that. I'm going to snap it up just to spite you. You might have sent it me for free, but I'm just going to cut it in the middle. Snip. Well, this will teach you. I'll show you by not ever making a video on it. <laughs> I had to go away from the TV for a while. Didn't see if you answered what happened to the layout you had done. Um, people didn't like it. People didn't like it. Yeah, I uh, I just decided to basically get rid of it because the majority of people didn't want to see it. So, yeah. Never mind. Lance, you're a legend. Thank you, mate. Really appreciate that. I like your accent. I don't know why. <laughs> but thanks, mate. Uh, Anthony, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to finish my smoke. I'm going to take my uh, painkillers because it's about that time. Please stop singing. Add some zeros. <laughs> Cheers for the 5 PS5 fan because mine sounds like a jet engine when it's on. The bearings have gone. Um, I set them on my website. Depending on the model you go for, either 30 or 40 pound. If you want to replace it yourself. If I was replacing it for you, I'd charge a 30 pound bench fee on top of it. Um, if you wanted it fully serviced at the same time, I'd charge a £50 fee because I'd have to strip it all down and stuff and clean it all out, replace the liquid metal and all of that. He stopped singing. <laughs> what? Whatever you said about five minutes ago, I've already heard a couple of them. Oh, well, never mind. He didn't come through, I couldn't see it. Sorry. Can I say? It's Virgin Media, it keeps going down. Ah. It's Virgin Media, it keeps going down. Yeah. Zero, 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 zero. Now shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Twitch chat. I appreciate that, mate. Thank you, mate. A very good evening. Have a successful repair night. Thank you. Um, d -d 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 Stephanie, sorry, I lost where I was on the chat then. Thank you, Steph. Can I sing? You can do what you want, mate. Is that Virgin Media talking in the background? Yeah, it is indeed. Didn't catch you last night, but saw the video today. Seems like you fixed it till it broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> now, I'll get to the bottom of that. I'll just reverse what I've done and figure it out. Um, Alin, welcome, mate. <clears throat> Another night of fixing stuff, yeah. Cheers, Lance. Thank you, mate. Cheers, buddy. Sarah cut the internet. Yeah, probably. Wouldn't surprise me. She gets jealous when I don't pay her any attention. <laughs> uh, what programming languages do I know? Uh, mainly PHP and C Sharp. <coughs> Dean, did I get your email? Uh, I didn't, mate. I haven't had time to get on tonight. <coughs> what was it about, mate? We fucked both the FPC connectors up. Oh, mate. <laughs> Definitely interested on the full. It's a disc edition. Yeah, so if I did a full service, I'd charge £50 for the service and replacing the fan, and then obviously the cost of the fan as well. So it would be £80 total if, it was, if I was replacing the fan as well. Um... And that would be like obviously strip it down, clean it out completely, um, you know, get rid of any dust, replace the liquid metal, um, all of that sort of stuff. So it'd be fifty pounds for the service, and then I wouldn't charge for the labour of the replacing the fan because I'd obviously be inside the console anyway. So I'd just charge the parts cost on that. Your order. Let me just have a quick look. Um, un moment, senor. Uh, I haven't got a browser open, hang on. Well, I have got a browser open, but not for orders. 
Do 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 ding 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 ding. Where are ya? There you are. Ah, the fuses. Yeah, they've gone out, mate. Yeah. Um, I should have marked them at. Yeah, I should have marked them. They should be with your boy Tuesday, I think. Yeah, I think I should be with you by like Tuesday. Your fees do seem rather cheap. I'll try and keep them viable, mate. Um, Fifty pound is like obviously it's like forty pound, forty pound for the uh, for the actual cleaning, and then the cost of like the liquid metal and stuff on top because liquid metal's pretty expensive. So um, yeah, no worries, Dean. Um, I should have marked that as dispatched. I've marked every other one as dispatched except for yours. I don't know why. But, yeah, it has been sent out, mate, the five fuses. Um, I think I sent them out. It was either today or yesterday, one of the two. Um, you ordered them yesterday, didn't you? It might have been today that I sent them out. Hang on, what time did you order them yesterday? I can't remember, but what time did you order them yesterday? Because I know what time I went to the post office. I went to the post office about four o'clock. Uh, no, about half past four, sorry. You ordered them... Yeah, it would have been yesterday. Because you ordered them at 1.50 p.m. So, yeah, I would have sent them out yesterday. So, they should be with you by, like, Tuesday, something like that. I don't do any mods at all, mate, no. Um, I, I have to be interested in what I'm doing. and uh, Modding, even if it's just, like, you know, spray painting and RGB mods and stuff, I wouldn't be interested in it. I have to enjoy what I do. So, yeah, sorry, mate. Cheers, Pork. Thank you. Bearded guy, welcome. Stephen, welcome. Uh, Juan, hopefully I pronounced that right. Have you tried ChatGPT? I have, but I guess I don't want to jump on the same bandwagon as everyone. How do you fix the storage management era? I'm not sure what you mean there, Michael, mate. We need one stream where Phil breaks all the consoles. I've done some C-sharp. Yeah, C-sharp's pretty good. Yeah, I should start singing again. I'll get more donations. Ha. <laughs> Malek, welcome. Yeah, I really have to enjoy what I do, and I would just find it boring. I'm just being honest. I would find it boring. I like to... I like to kind of challenge myself. I like to be... I like to be engrossed in something and invested in it, and I just genuinely wouldn't be invested in that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah... Right, there's a couple of things I'm going to be doing tonight. I'm going to get some work done now. Um, but I do want to give a quick shout out to someone quickly first. Uh, so he might be he might be watching. I'm not sure. Um, so CMI Zappar, he's a viewer of the channel, but he's also created a couple of things here, um, a couple of little tools which are kind of handy. And he sent me some to try. So I'm going to be trying them tonight. I received them today, so I'm going to try them tonight. How's it going, Shane? James. Welcome, Scoot. Evening, my lover. Yeah, so CMI's app. I'm going to post a link uh, to his video. Uh, so check this out. So what he's designed is a little PCB for a HDMI tester and a USB tester. Um, so obviously he sent me these for free just to try them. I don't know what the cost you're going to have to contact him. Um, I may be working out something for the store, um, you know, so as I can sell them on the store and offer a good competitive price. Uh, he did say something about um, about customising them with the uh, console fix branding on it and stuff. So I'm going to be trying these out. Philip, you're a legend, mate. Thank you, thank you, dude. You're bloody early. No, I'm not. It's 10:34. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a HDMI tester and a USB tester, and they light up when they um, they light up when they when you plug them in, as long as they're working. Looking at them, um, there's a couple of things I'd change. First of all, um, I haven't tried them yet. I literally received them today, but um there's a couple of things i'd change number one I'd, I'd probably design some sort of a 3d printed housing you know something that people can either make up or buy or something i don't know uh because yeah obviously you know a bare pcb they're going to get liquid damage and stuff like that um so i would probably change that and on top of that i would maybe have this 
double sided with the LEDs on both sides because obviously if you've got a device where you plug it in that way you've got no lights they're going to be on the bottom so you'd have to flip the device upside down uh, or you know if you're plugging it into a TV and the HDMI port's upside down then it's going to be you're not going to be able to see it and stuff so I'd probably have this double sided you know and just have wires running through so as it connects up the LEDs and stuff in on the other side um, other than that it looks pretty good to be fair it looks pretty neat um, same with the USB tester um, I mean USB normally they're only mounted one way as a general rule but you could put that onto an extension cable anyway so that wouldn't be too much of an issue um, you know you can test your USBs with this it'll light up when you've got power um, and if you've got data the middle one will light up and this one You've got five volt. You've got an LED for five volts. You've got an LED for EDID. You've got an LED for power, and then you've got the differential pairs. Uh, uh, an LED for each if, each differential pair as well. So I assume I assume these light up when um, when you've got data signals coming through. Uh, so you've got uh, you've got the differential pairs zero, one, two, and then the uh, the clock lines as well. So it looks pretty handy, but like I said, I would change it so as you've got these LEDs on the other side as well. I'm not sure whether that would cost much more to actually do, but that's what I would do. Um, what are these? these? This is a HDMI tester, um, CMI Zapper, um, CMIZapper.com, go check it out. Uh, but he sent me these to try out. Uh, obviously, I haven't paid for them, I'm not being paid to say anything about them, I'm just going to try them out. I've never tried them before, I'm going to try them out, I'm going to see how they behave. And, uh, yeah, we're going to trial them tonight, see how they do. So, yeah, they look pretty handy. I have a USB killer. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Storage man management error for the Xbox Series S. My Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is coming up with error code. I'm not sure, mate, to be honest. What error code is it, do you know? They do work upside down. Yeah, I know. I know they work upside down. But what I'm saying is, like, let's say for example, because this side it's fine. Like on an Xbox, it's fine. Uh, but if you've got a device, because this isn't just for consoles, right? So if you've got a device that, um, you know, that that's got the HDMI port backwards uh, or upside down, which, to be honest, I can think of one right now. I can genuinely think of one device right now that has that issue. PS5 when you're working on it, right? Because you have it this way, where the disk drive is on top, right? When you're taking it apart. So let's say you're working on it and you've got this, you want to plug this in, you've got to plug it in that way. And then you can't see the LEDs. That's the only downfall that I'm seeing so far. Apart from the fact that obviously there's no um, case on it. Um, but other than that, oh, hang on. Huh. No, actually, you know what? You might be right. It looks like the LED is double-sided. It's right, yeah. Okay, well, I'm wrong. I apologise, CMI Zapper. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. They do work the other side. There you go. I'm an idiot. Ignore me. Ignore me. Completely ignore me. He's thought of it. Genius. What a legend. Um, yeah, I didn't even notice, so I'm sorry. But yeah, apparently they do work upside down. CMI has presented the chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong. They do work upside down. Okay, well, yeah, CMI's app is in the chat. Thanks for sending me these, mate. Appreciate it. I'm going to give them a try. They turned up today. Uh, so this specific Xbox, um, this specific Xbox is. Uh, I think it's trace damage, so I'm expecting this to not work. <laughs> I'm expecting this uh, this HDMI tester to not work, but you know, um, we'll see. Let's see how good it actually is. Let's see if it works when there's trace damage. <laughs> no, this isn't me testing this thing. I know it's not going to work because, as, as far as I'm aware, this this Xbox has got trace damage. But yeah.
Okay, so the console turns on. Let's plug in USB. Okay, this is overheating as well. This console's overheating as well. It looks, looks like it hasn't been put back together fully, so I'm not going to leave it on too long. It looks like we've got... Yeah, it's just shut down on me. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we've got absolutely no data coming through the HDMI at all. Um, not sure if we're meant to get anything on this middle LED. Because it is turning on, the console's turning on. I'm not sure if this middle LED is turning on, meant to turn on at all. We've got USB 5 volt and power, so. Hey, Gibbo. Let me know if you put them up in the store. Um, CMI's app will have a link. Um, I haven't got a link. Ah, there's it. there you go. Let's test these upside down. There you go, look. Uh, oh, no, we can't. Hang on. No, that is the right way. Yeah, so USB ports work. This seems to work. Um, seems to be working pretty well so far. Um, but yeah, CMI did say something about possible customization with you know the console fix branding on it. Um, I can't remember the email off the top of my head, but I like that the fact that you can stick it on a key. I do like that. Um, would be handy to have this, you know, be able to stick this on a key as well. But I guess you know, given the you know, given the amount of amount of stuff on there, I guess that just wasn't possible. But it's all good. But yeah, I guess the only downfall I'm seeing so far is that this isn't in a housing, and I'm a little bit worried it might break. But you know, uh, that also depends if CMI's app is going to tell us where to get the HDMI ports from as well. If they do get damaged, the middle LED on the USB tester will blink if the CPU is talking on the USB port. Okay, got ya. Right, gotcha. Okay, well. They do seem to work so far. Well, can't speak for this one because, as far as I know, this needs trace repair. But we'll see. I could test it once it's done. So, yeah, I just thought I'd trial it tonight on the things I'm working on. Like I said, he's not paid me to work on them. All he's done is sent them me for free, and that's it. Uh, uh, sorry, not, not, he's not paid me to say anything specific. He just wants my opinion. Uh, so, but I do appreciate him sending them. I think that's my Xbox you're working on. I haven't replaced the thermal paste. Also, the hard drive is faulty as well as the HDMI port. Gotcha, mate. No worries. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Well, that would explain why it's not talking to the USB tester then. And also why it's uh, ramping up the fans. And also why it's shutting down after about 30 seconds. Okay, mate. Cool. Good shit. We'll get it sorted. Hopefully. I've not tested on consoles so it to be interesting to see how this goes. Yeah, definitely, mate, yeah. He definitely intrigued me when you reached out to me about him, so... Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll give him a try. Ooh, wrong screws. Ooh. Uh, what screws are they for? Hmm. I'll replace them with the correct screws. Pinos, thank you, mate. Any repair on Twitch? Uh, Matthew Green, I think I said thank you for that. Did Cody get his screwdriver? He did, yeah. Except the only problem is he didn't want that one. He wanted mine. So I've had to have the new one. Because <laughs> he wouldn't let me have the old one back. So I've just had this one instead. Um, it's all good, it doesn't matter. But yeah, Cody didn't want the new one. He wanted daddy's. Because Cody's a little shit. He's playing COD tonight on Twitch. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, Cody wanted daddy's uh, screwdriver. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at that, Captain Crunch. We'll see if it's the cable. Um, so yeah, if when you think that the Xbox is 
uh, needs a replacement hard drive. There was an issue. I don't think it was an issue on these models because this is the uh, Robot White Limited Edition. So I don't think it's going to be an issue on these models, but there was an issue with some of the original ones where the Amphenol SATA cables were basically faulty and it would just, it would just make out like the hard drive was dead because it couldn't read the data. Anyone else having notifications? Um, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and then turn notifications back on. Try that, mate, and that should fix it. It's just YouTube. It's just for some reason they uh, the notifications mess up. What it is is when you like, let's say for example you don't click on a notification one day. You know, like you're too busy or something like that. You don't click on the notification and watch the video from the person that's notified. You know, from where you got the notification. Um, whether because you're too busy or you just can't be asked or whatever the reason, YouTube notes that. YouTube actually logs that, and if you do it so many times, they'll say, right, we just won't send you any notifications anymore until you start watching the content again. It's really weird. We you continue on the PS5 with the crash issue. Yeah, but not tonight, because I've got work to do, mate. That'll be uh, another time, another place sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I will continue with it. It's just research, really. That's all I'm doing. It's just researching what I can do, what I, what I can't do, etc. So, whoops. Is that CADA 852D hot air station good? They're not great. They're not great. They'll get you through if you want just, you know, something for basic repairs, but they're not the best. They're not the best. If you want quality, you've got to spend the money. What's with the stream layout not working? Uh, I've turned the layout off, mate, because a lot of people didn't like it. The majority of people didn't like it. I really need to edit some more of them PS5 videos. I've worked on, like, eight of the boards. Yeah, the majority spoke. I said they didn't like it, so I got rid of it. I haven't got rid of it. I can turn it on and off when I want. Do. I'll try and do a uh, nice clean desk. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try and accommodate to what people prefer, mate. Um, you know, if if people don't like it, they're not going to watch the videos, right? So you have to be a yes man when it comes to being a YouTuber. You have to do as you're told. Unfortunately. Ooh, stringy. Hmm. Well, never mind. Get off. Damn CMI zapper. <laughs> How's it going, Sean? My sister's got one of those screwdrivers branded and summers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet she has a right good screwing with that, doesn't she? <laughs> oh god. Um, I recommend the Atten ST eight sixty two D. This is why I'll never earn money on YouTube. Never say never, mate. Never say never. Two years ago, I was I was earning barely anything on YouTube. Now I earn a living. Do 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 do. Right. 
Right. Let's have a look what's happened, shall we? Let's get rid of that. We'll clean all of that out later on. Not an issue. Okay, so we've got a damaged screw thread there. That's not really that much of an issue. It's just uh, it's just a mounting hole. Um, looks like the trace has actually gone with it, but not too much of an issue because it's just a mounting hole. Right. What? First of all, what? Um, well, we'll look at that in a minute. But what cable is this? Right, this is a Foxconn, so it probably isn't the cable, because the Foxconn cables are pretty good. The Amphenol cables are the ones that were causing issues, but that one, as you can see, is a Foxconn, so it should be okay. So, basically, with the Amphenol cables, the Amphenol's a manufacturer, by the way, but with the Amphenol cables, they they broke somewhere, like the, the actual cable broke inside, because inside this is just wires, like what six wires I think it is one two three four seven wires um, but the wires are really thin but I think they made them a little bit too thin and they basically just snapped um, probably because of the bend in the SATA cable so they switched to Foxconn and they stopped having them issues but yeah that's probably gonna need uh, an actual hard drive but I'll just charge parts on that I wouldn't charge you know they're not expensive these days um, Let's try and keep the cost down as much as we possibly can. Because as far as I know, this needs trace repair. So, let's just, I don't know where my X-clamp tool is. But then again, do I ever know where my X-clamp tool is? Oh, there it is, right next to me. All right, let's not destroy his traces on his, um, on his RAM then. <laughs> Right, that needs bending back a little bit. It's a little bit out of shape. That will reshape properly when it comes back. Ah, that's what it was overeating. All right, cool. Righty-o, let's get it on. Let's have a look. What are we dealing with? Right, okay. Um, that's probably going to have blown the um, encoder, to be honest. Uh, because there's a bridge between these two, and I'm assuming that's probably going to be shorted to ground as well. I don't know how bad that goes, but um, it's probably blown the... Uh, it's probably blown the encoder, to be honest. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm going to remove the port in a second, but let's just see if this was bridged to ground at all. So, continuity. Beep mode on. Yeah, okay, yeah, so there is, there is a bridge to ground on there. In fact, I'm wondering... Well, I'm going to remove the port quickly. Um, I'll get rid of that completely. But I'm wondering if we've actually got a short to ground on the data line there because it doesn't actually look bridged to ground. But if we've got a short to ground on the data line, then we've definitely got a bad encoder. So let's remove the port first and foremost. Damn, where's my tweezers? Oh, I ain't got my tweezers. Shit. Um, hmm, there they are. She's definitely not the worst I've seen, I will say that much. I've seen worse. Okay, there we go. 
Right, so that port's removed. Should bring it back on the desk properly. Hello from Sweden, welcome. How's it going, mate? Uh, if I miss anyone, by the way, I don't mean to. I'm just, uh, when I'm actually doing the repair, I try to focus as much as I can on the repair, so. I don't deliberately ignore people. Okay, so we've got a few missing traces here. Uh, one, two, three, four missing traces on the data lines. All right, so we've got not too bad. Um, that chip's gonna have to at least come off to be retinned and repositioned. This HDMI encoder, redriver, whatever the hell you want to call it, it's all the same thing. So that's gonna have to be taken off to V10, but that's fine. I'll do that before they actually do the traces, uh, just because it'll be easier. But I just want to run a few tests first. <laughs> v driver. So, if I put one pro on ground, uh, no, the filters are fine. So it looks like it was just bridged to this pin here. So I'm testing the actual traces. It looks like it was just bridged to that pin. That filter is going to have to come off. So I can, well, mind you, I probably tin that filter without taking it off. Uh, let's just check in. So I'm going to go into diode mode. No, sorry, resistance mode, sorry. Um, and just check C25. And C50. So C25, this one up here, and C50, this one here. Damn it, it's way out of focus. Sorry, guys. My bad. Um, so, yeah, C25 and C50 are connected together. Let's just check that. Uh, all right, we've got 5000 ohms on C50, which is fine. So, I'm going to remove this chip, retin it. Um, and then just place it back down, and then I'll run these four traces. And hopefully it'll work then. Is that ESD on the wonk? Uh, no, I think it looks okay. Um, no, the ESD looks okay. It's not too bad. Uh, it'll be fluxed up, but actually, hang on. Um... Slightly damaged. Very slightly. Hopefully it's just surface damage. We'll see. We will see. I thought it was my eyes. <laughs> um, do we keep losing connection? I will say this in advance, if he does drop out and doesn't reconnect, I will be back. Because if he keeps dropping out, I'm going to have to switch to my secondary connection. Uh, but yeah, if he does drop out and doesn't reconnect, I'll just start the stream again. I'm going to have to phone Virgin Media up and get him to sort out the issues because I can't keep having these dropouts. Now the question I need to ask myself is where the hell did I put my nozzles? Damn it. Where's my nozzles gone? There it is. Right, so I'm going to pull this chip off. No, I've, I've sidelined that PS5 from yesterday.
Right, okay. Yeah, so there's no solder on this ground pad, um, but the ground pad is actually used for thermal dissipation, so it does need some solder on there. So we're going to have to re-tin all of this. So that's why I took it off instead of just re-tinning it, because I didn't know whether there'd be any solder on there or not. So I took it off just because it's easier. Right, I'm looking for my other tube of flux and I can't freaking find it, but the nozzle's on there and I need it. I've lost the tube of flux somehow. I don't know how, but I've lost the tube of flux and it's got a nozzle on there that I need. Because I ain't got any more. <laughs> so I keep trying to use my flux and I can't. It's also got the plunger on it as well, and I need the freaking plunger and all. I can't seem to find my freaking flux anywhere. It's really annoying when I do that because... Ah, I've got it. Never mind. Panic over. His desk is spotless. No, I really ain't, mate. <laughs> really ain't. I really need to get that shed built at the end of the month. Um, I am doing it at the end of the month. Just waiting for some invoices to come in. So as I can actually afford it, fill his flux off. <laughs> it's in the bedroom. It's probably under Cody's bed, mate. Keeps nicking all my tools. <laughs> right, let me just... Um, I'll just switch to an another... Well, a more appropriate tip for the job. Because I don't think a knife tip is very good for this job. So I'm going to use a chisel tip. Right. Just gotta wait for the damn thing to beep at me. Thank you. You really don't need much solder, but you need a little bit on the ground pad. I also need more freaking flux. Right. Let's clean that cap up. There we go. So that's looking a bit better. I'll drop this chip on. You need a Lewis Rossman amount of flux on there. <laughs> I really don't because I'm running low on flux. How many different solder tips do you need? Um, that really depends on preference. Um, personally, I use about four different tips. I use a small chisel tip. Uh, I use a small bevel tip. Um, occasionally, I use a large bevel tip if I'm doing like ground ground holes and stuff. And I've also got my uh, BGA tip. Um, which I use for large BGA work, which is this one. That's like a shovel, but that's not needed for 90% of repairs. Well, 99% of repairs, but probably three or four, depending on preference, really, but probably three or four. Good evening, not the one. Welcome. Thunderstorms here in South Texas. Hopefully you stay safe, mate. I'll give that a tap.
Right, I'll position it in a second. Just press down on it first and get rid of that solder, that excess solder that's on there. It doesn't seem to want to position properly. That seems a bit better. That seems better. I'm using Kester uh, 60, 6337. No, it might be 640, I'm not sure. Uh, it's Kester leaded solder, uh, 0.4 millimeters or 0.015 inches. Uh, right, that's lined up nicely. I will clean all of that up in a minute. Sort out these uh, these EMI EMI filters. So this is just clean up at the minute. Just um, make sure that everything's good to go when I do actually restore them traces. That's better. That looks a little bit nicer. There you go. Right. Watching it in hospital. Sorry to hear that, LK, mate. I hope you um I hope you recover from that, buddy. My partner and my kids just all suffer from asthma. It can be pretty dangerous. Uh, you know what, I'm not going to run these from the traces themselves, so I don't need to grind anything. Uh, I'm going to run the jumper wires from the EMI filters. So I'm actually going to remove this EMI filter. So this just filters out noise. Um, the console will actually work without these on the Xbox because it's got a continuous path underneath. But it filters out noise. But I'm going to remove that for now. I'll leave that to one side. If it'll ever get off my tweezer. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is rather than using the um, the actual trace wire themselves and making it difficult on myself, I'm just going to run jumper wires directly from the filters. I'm not going to bridge the filters. That would be that would be stupid. 
always put the filters back and make sure they're in circuit but I'm going to run the jumper wire from the top of the filter so as it's got a nice a nice uh, solid point to, to bond to if that makes sense so let me just grab my jumper wire I'm going to use 0.1 mil for this <laughs> like the stream if you like consolefix.co.uk <laughs> Oh dear. So I'll just solder that to there. I always like to grab these with a pair of tweezers and reinforce the wire. Now I've got to find my blade because I ain't got a clue where that is. Ah, there it is. Got it. Never mind. Uh, right. I need another pair of tweezers. So I can shape this because the thing is, if you look at the specs for HDMI, you'll see that the tolerance in trace length between each trace is pretty tight at three millimeters. So I like to try and follow the original path whenever I can. I'm also going to strengthen this at the edge of this wire, uh, at the edge of the trace. Beep you bastard, thank you. So I've got a little bit of the exposed trace at the edge, so I'm going to strengthen it there. And then I can just trim it off. There we go. And it looks more professional. That is very true, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what Sarah says, mate. Your headache seems to have gone pretty quick, Eddie. I'm sure you're not faking it. <laughs> Antos, thank you for subbing on Prime, mate. I appreciate that. Welcome, buddy. Hope you're doing well. You're on a nebulizer for a few days because you also have COVID. Wow, rip. Sorry, mate. Get better soon, buddy. Right, let's just tin this wire. So this is enameled wire. So we have to tin it first. Tucked up so I'm not feeling too bad. Yeah, I'm just messing, mate. I hope you do feel better soon. I've never got that. Like, people say, like, and I know I've just said it because it's just a saying, but I've never got that. Oh, I hope you get better soon. No, fuck you. I want to get better now. Forget bit forget getting better soon. I wanna get better now. Stuff later. <laughs> yeah, so I always try and Follow the original path if I can. Because 
It's not. It's not so much for looks. I mean, it does look more professional, yeah, but it's more for knowing that it's going to work without issue. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that, mate. Yeah, it's more for knowing that it's going to work better without any kind of issue, any kind of signal loss. Um, I want to keep that signal in integrity if I can. And doing it this way, I know that it's got the original in integrity that it's meant to have. I don't want this coming back under warranty. I never want to see this console again. Once it's sent back. Not for any particular reason, other than if I see it again, that's bad for the customer. Right, there we go, there's number two. Worst part of feeling ill to me is throwing up. No, that's the best part, dude, because that's when you're starting to feel better. Like, there's nothing nothing better than, like, you know, if you like, you got a headache and you feel sick and stuff, there's nothing better than throwing up and instantly feeling ten times better. Like, genuinely, like, I'm being serious, there's nothing better than feeling ten times better after you've thrown up. Right, here's number three. So, yeah, I know this is more time-consuming doing it this way, but... You know, I could just, I could theoretically just run a jumper wire and say fuck it, um, but I know that this isn't going to come back unless the port gets broke again, and obviously in that case, then it's not my fault. Um, but even like the way I'm doing this as well, I'm basically restoring this trace, like these traces, so I know that. It's gonna. It's gonna last. Kenji West, mate, you're a legend. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate the support. Yeah, I know that it's gonna be a lasting repair. So I just need to tin this jumper at the end. Probably not going to get it completely perfect, but I'll get it as near as damn it. By the way, these traces, they don't have to come all the way back because the port seat's quite far forward anyway, so they don't have to go all the way back. All right, let me just move some of this burnt flux out of the way quickly. so I can see a little bit better. Well, I do like to take care when doing these. Just do a better job and everyone's happy. I don't have to do a warranty and the customer don't have to end up with a console that breaks. I used to be really, really bad at trace repair, but a little bit of practice, you get used to it.
Thanks for my morning advice, Phil. Had a few stellas. Nice, dude. Right, let's, uh, let's just clean this up. It's mainly this area I really want to clean up. I've sat there and took care to position those trace wires. I'm going to have to do it again as soon as I've got rid of this flux off here. So I'm trying to get rid of the flux so as I can add some conformal coating and basically secure these wires in permanently. And it'll basically be a permanent repair even if you have to change the HDMI port again. Um, you know, as long as you don't yeet them again, whoops, like that. As long as you don't yeet them again, you'll be able to change the HDMI port without damaging the traces yes yeah, so I have to I'm gonna have to reposition these again but it's fine right We'll just get it in focus for me, and then I'll get it in focus for you. There you go. So I know this isn't following the exact path, but it's as close as possible. It's definitely close. It's definitely within three millimeters anyway. That's for certain. I'm just gonna play around with it a little bit. Just play around a little bit. Right, conformal coating time. Yeah, this will allow for future repairs, if needs be. There we go, that's it. So that's nicely covered. So, now the big question is, can I find my UV light? Or am I gonna go nuts? No, I've got it, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, right, USB cable, that's what I need next. USB cable. Plug that in. Uh, 
And you can all get a suntan. You can all get a suntan. Suntans for everybody. Buffering. No, it comes back. Don't worry. It comes back. I think he's gone again. No, I'm here. And we back. Yep, we back indeed. Uh, anonymous tip ten dollars. Thank you. Uh, I missed that. Uh, sorry, mate. I really appreciate that. Thank you to the person who tipped ten dollars. How's it going, Chris? No booter tonight, by the way. Yeah, sorry about that, guys and girls. All right, so while I'm waiting for that, all right, I'm going to grab myself a smoke. Uh, except Phil, except you, Phil, because you ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. It was probably me. Uh it shows up as anonymous on uh on my notifications, mate. Uh but thank you if it was you. Uh so if I look on there uh it says anonymous tip ten dollars, so it doesn't actually show up that uh who sent it. It was sixteen minutes ago, so if it was you mate, I really appreciate it, thank you. But it shows up as anonymous for some reason. Uh, there is a button that you press on the tip page, so... Um, yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it, though. It's me. I'm crap at this stuff. It's all good, mate. I really appreciate it, bud. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Genuinely. But, yeah, if you if you don't untick it, then it comes through as an anonymous... Uh, tip so yeah was me <laughs> if you're all going to argue you can all tip ten dollars I don't mind <laughs> right that should be nicely cured I'm going to tip Phil naught pound <laughs> and our next time no worries mate thank you No worries. Right. Let's have a look at that. So that should be nice and solid now. Yeah, so that's going nowhere now. Uh, when I drop a port on here now, it'll... It'll basically... Um, allow me to drop the port on without it flying anywhere. Where did I put the... Filter? I think that's it. Is that it? I believe it is. Yep, there we go. Cool. Coolio. Right, I'll knock my airflow down. So I can put this filter back on. Partially float it on. No, nope, that didn't work. Let's just add some flux then. Press down on it.
There we go. It's got some nice solder joints on it there. Right, and now... Now... I can read in these. No, no, you do not blob. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just grab some more solder. There we go. Right, I'll just grab a new port. I love being so close to consolefix.shop because at consolefix.shop they sell all the ports I need. Well, some of them. <laughs> right. Okie doke. So remove the nozzle then. You wouldn't happen to have a store, would you? No, I just know someone who does. <laughs> Some guy called the coder. <laughs> right, okay, I'm gonna go 480 degrees Celsius. Flow this from underneath. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. So I normally wait for the solder to drop down like, the, like those two have. There you go. Press down on the port. Hold for a few seconds. I always wiggle the port as well just to try and flow the solder. Sounds like a right muppet. Oh, he's a right bellend, but he's got some good stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy who runs consolefix.shop, he's a right bellend, but he's got some good stock on there. Right. Let's just give these a quick nudge. And uh, no, I'm not quite not quite soldered, unless the traces are a little bit loose. Uh yeah, so some of these are not soldered. Uh, so I'm going to need to run the iron over them. Um, well, that's fine. No, I don't need to shoot. Right. 
Uh, where did I... I had a little piece of solder. There it is. Uh, waste not, want not. And all of that good stuff. Make sure I press down on the pads that have got wires on them. Just drag over a few times with a blob of solder. There we go. Clean the tip. And you see, because I've put conformal coating over it, the wires are going nowhere. Those wires are going nowhere. And if someone needs to lift this port off in the future, they can. Because, like I said, the jumper wires are underneath these filters, and at the same time, they're also underneath the conformal coating. So it's basically like the trace repair never happened. Like if you could, if you couldn't see the traces, like you'd, you'd never know because it's not going to go anywhere even when I, even when someone lifts the port off again. Unless they actually, you know, damage traces doing it, like doing the lift again, then it's going to be, it's going to be repairable in the future if the port ever gets broken again, without having to do, without having to redo trace repair. That's the entire point of the jumper wires, of the uh, conformal coating, is to protect the jumper wires from falling off. I can use hot air around it, I can use soldering, soldering iron around it. Shouldn't be an issue. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and clean. And then the way I'm going to test this to make sure we've actually got a connection on those traces is I'm going to use diode mode. Well, I can use continuity mode, actually. I'll show you how to do it in continuity mode. Um, so I want to make sure that we've got good contact on all of them pads. So if I just dry this IPA away, uh, there's a little bit of excess flux, which I'll get rid of in a minute. I'll use a brush in a minute to get rid of the last bit of flux. But for now, let's go into continuity mode. And if I probe the bottom of this filter and the top of the pin, uh, I haven't got beep mode on, damn it. Uh, let me turn beeper back on. Yeah. Yep, so as you can see, we've got continuity on the top of the pin, which means that the actual jumper wire is soldered. Same as that one. That one. And I'm only pressing really lightly so as I'm not pushing down on the pin as well. Yeah, so we've got continuity on them. That one there and that one there are ground. No bridge there. No bridge there, no short to ground, no short to ground, no short to ground, and no short to ground, cool. So that's how I test those without wiggling the pin, because if I wiggle the pin there's a chance I can break the trace. I don't want to do that obviously, whereas these ones I can, I can wiggle the pin with the tweezers. And make sure that they're all soldered.
Yeah, there we go. Good shit. Good stuff. That's all good. Nicely soldered. Job done. So that trace repair is complete. So as long as the HDMI encoder has not been blown by that bridge earlier on, and as long as the HDMI encoder worked to start with, then this should work. Make sure the port's clean and also inside the port as well because that can cause issues. So just make sure that I've got a nice clean port. And by the way, that wiggling on that is normal. That is completely and utterly normal. Don't worry about that. That's just the outer like ground point for the... Um, for the port, but it's completely normal. Good. That is pretty sweet. So yeah, I'll take a little bit longer to do the trace repairs, but you know what, I don't care. I'd rather take an extra 20 minutes. It's not going to cost the customer any extra, but I'd rather take an extra 20 minutes and know that I've done the job right first time because now I know that unless this gets physically broken again, it's not going to come back. It's not going to break. It's not going to fail some, sometime down the line. Just spend that extra time. It's not going to hurt. Yeah, you might be able to get, if you did two of these a day, you might be able to get one extra trace repair, one extra HDMI port job done. Like in the time it takes you extra to do it neat, but who gives a shit? There's always tomorrow. You can always do that extra put, extra job tomorrow. That's the way I see it anyway. Uh, chip looks fine, looks nicely aligned. Uh, there's enough solder on the pins. Cool. Mini works, thank you mate. Appreciate that buddy. Thanks for subbing with Twitch mate. 13 months, damn. That's a long time. Yeah. I'm happy. Confident. Good stuff. Where's my thermal paste? Do 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 do. Where's my paste at? Where's my paste at? Where's my paste at? Yeah, really, where is my thermal paste? I've got two tubes, two tubes of stuff. Where's it gone? That one I'll do. There we go. That'll do. That will do nicely. Uh, we've got no viscous paste on these. On the RAM or anything. Um, I've got a little bit, but I haven't got a lot. Hmm. I could steal some off some of the boards, but I haven't got a lot at all. Uh, you know what, let's do that now. So I'm having to take this heat sink back off. Don't know if I'll have enough, but like I said, I can always steal some off other boards. This isn't super important, but 
you know, it is Microsoft. If it wasn't ne absolutely needed, then they wouldn't spend the extra couple of pence on putting it there in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I will replace it. Whenever I can, I'll replace it. You know, if someone's took it off, whenever I can, I'll replace it. Sometimes I can't, you know, sometimes I've just got none and I just can't. Um, you can't buy this exact stuff. You can buy, um, you can buy viscous paste, but not this stuff. And yeah, I could use thermal pads, but it's not factory at that point, is it? I'll just take this off donor boards anyway. I don't buy the stuff. Yeah, I do need a little bit more off some more boards. Blue tack thermal paste indeed. So yeah, let's just steal some more off some more boards. Like this one, for example. Good thing is this stuff is reusable, so it's not too bad. I mainly get the stuff off the uh, Xbox Series consoles. They use an awful lot of it on them. Grab another board with some more on. I will get enough viscous paste to complete this. I will get enough viscous paste to complete this. How's the shed fund coming along? Um, we raised about $700, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's about $700, I think. There we go. Yeah, that's got some viscous paste on it now. So at least the RAM and VRMs will get kept cool. Either way, I'm building the shed. Uh, I'm going to start buying the wood at the end of the month. Uh, hmm. Might have bent that a little too much. That's it. Yeah, there we go. That's nice and tight. You can reshape those. They're not, not too bad. Not too shabby. Right. And no, I'm not over tightening those screws, by the way. Notice I slow down when I get towards the end. I'll be building it myself, yeah. Anything, something like that. Uh, two of the pads under my PS5 safe bridge have bridged while wicking away solder. I've removed the IC, but the bridge is on the board. Can't seem to wick it up. Mask may, may be gone. If it's just like the solder mask is missing, you just use conformal coating. Um, so wick it all back up, use conformal coating and then you can put the chip back on. Right, um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna screw this back together just yet. Um, I'm gonna test it with this hard drive, just to double check, but 
the customer said he thinks that he needs a new hard drive, so. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give it a quick test. Partially reassembled. Um, but I'm probably going to need to grab a hard drive for it. clean out this fan so whenever I put a console back together as long as it's a successful fix and I'm actually getting paid I do clean out well I'll give it a basic service I don't give it a you know a deep clean where I'm sitting there for half an hour just cleaning out all of the nooks and crannies but I get a free basic service you know like clean out all the visible dust etc wrong way Sometimes I put the fans up in upside down, but I think it looks cooler. Ha! See what I did there? Uh, TNC, thank you for subbing on Twitch, mate. I really appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. Smurf sheet, I'm going to have to use that one. I'm stealing that, mate. Just, uh, just saying. <laughs> stealing that saying from you. Copyright the coder. If it works, I'll straighten some nails out for you, Shed. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right, let's flip this thing upside down. Actually, no, let's not flip it upside down. It doesn't really need to be. Um, well, yeah, it does because my cable won't reach. Sorry, it does need to be that way up. Let's just connect up the other parts. Yeah, that hard drive's dead. Yeah, I can hear the hard drive trying to spin up. It's definitely dead. But let's just see if this works. It's probably not going to work because... Um, it's not actually going to activate the HDMI signal until it detects a hard drive, which is why it shuts down after 30 minutes. Uh, 30 seconds, sorry. So... Yeah, I'm going to need to put a hard drive in. I'm going to need to find one. Um, the trouble now is finding one at, the, at this ungodly hour. Uh, I do have an SS, a one terabyte SSD somewhere. But I'm not putting that in because it's too expensive. <laughs> but I will use it for testing. I will use it just to confirm it works for now. Uh, I've got a brand new one terabyte crucial SSD there. So that's going to shut down in a minute, I'm assuming. No, don't worry, guys. Sorry, it will reconnect. It will reconnect. It's it keeps happening. I don't know what it is. I need to get in touch with Virgin Media, and I keep forgetting. Um, yeah, sorry about the disconnect. Where's my other screwdriver? There it is. Should be back. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Yeah, so I'll use my. I've got a one a brand new one terabyte SSD right here. 
I'm going to use that just for testing and then what I'll do is I'll find out a fully working drive tomorrow because I haven't got my um, what do you call it anyway but I can at least reinstall the software on an SSD um, Virgin Media got problems everywhere yeah I know yeah I can at least I can at least install the SSD, uh, install the software onto this SSD, and that way then I'll know it's working. Obviously, it's too expensive to replace, to to just leave an SSD in there without it being paid for. But yeah, oh well. Oi. Screw in. I'll find the hole eventually. Loading. It should be back, mate. It should be back. Yeah, so there you go. Just for testing, there's an SSD. Check to make sure you don't have some device streaming taking all of your internet because your chat keeps working. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not. It's not my internet. Like the internet's fine. It just. It could be a driver issue on my end. I don't know. But yeah, it's one of them. I'll figure it out. Put hairs around the hole. You'll never miss. <laughs> Depends on your sexual preference, mate. <laughs> Right, now let's see if it works. Is it going to detect on the here now? Hey, there we go. Boom. Oh, I like that. It's all loading up. We've got signal on D012 and clock. We've got EDID. We've got 5 volt and we've got power. Boom. That should be good. Oh, yeah. So we've got all four differential pairs, we've got the EDID, we've got um, the uh, 5 volt and the uh, power lines, seems to be fine. Those LEDs are super fun, yeah indeed, I like that. Pretty cool, good shit. Right, now let's actually test it with a HDMI cable and make sure it's displaying. But that seems to be. Ugly cam it is. Look at that, still shit loads of boxes I haven't gone through. But hey ho. There we go. Only took hair longer. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I'm a YouTube boiler, I'll get it for free. <laughs> I want a pair of those, let me know if you put them up in the store. Um, go to, I'll type it in chat, cmizapper.com. Uh, I think it's cmizapper.com. Is that right? Yep, there we go. Uh, right, cmizapper.com. Yeah, check them out. Uh, yeah, they work uh, pretty well by the look of it. But we've got a display, anyway. Um, I'm not going to install the software tonight. It's tedious and it takes too long. I'd rather get on with another actual repair. So, that is working. Theoretically, that should work in 4K now. Um, but I don't have the software on a hard drive and I haven't got my... Um, I haven't got my drive to hand at the minute. My uh, external reader to hand so as I can partition it properly. Um, but yeah, that seems to be working fine. Trace repairs a success. Uh, there's no there's no discoloration on the screen, anything like that. You know, no off colours, no spots on the screen, uh, no red dots. So it seems to be working absolutely fine. Shouldn't be an issue. And the tester says it's okay, so it must be okay. 
CMIZapper.com for those testers. They're pretty good. Well, they seem pretty good anyway. Let's see if we're communicating with USB now, shall we? That's the wrong one. Go away. I knew that. Could have told me. Yep, there you go. It's communicating with the CPU. Uh, so that lit up green. Seems to be working good. Um, so it's. I'm assuming that it's... Yeah, it is actually uh, every so often communicating with the CPU. Uh, so, yeah, that looks pretty good. Classic USB, yeah. You get it wrong, you turn it around, you get it wrong again. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. That works as advertised, I suppose. Uh, get in touch with me, mate. We'll see if we can work something about, out about buying... Um, potentially either buying a few in bulk to put on the store or getting some customised, maybe, as well. I don't know. Um, we'll have to work out a price. What's your normal pricing on those, mate? Can you let everyone in chat know? What do you normally charge for a set? So for the USB tester and the HDMI tester, and all of them in one. What would you normally charge for that? So what are your prices? Because I don't actually know. Uh, so HDMI tester. USB works 100%, 50% of the time. <laughs> Would you do a deal on both of them if people was to buy both of them? 50 euros on the USB tester, 60 on the HDMI tester. Would you do a deal on both of them? You got Bush on his TV too, did you notice that? <laughs> I like Bush. Yeah, hard drive failures are pretty often, in the, pretty common, especially now in the um, Xbox because... Um, yeah, um, the, what do you call it, the hard drives are like 10 years old, uh, I mean they come out in like 2000, well these are not, these come out in like 2017 to 2020, but um, yeah, I mean hard drives have got a finite lifespan anyway, it's pretty common. Evening Paul, yeah, it does seem like a really good, uh, a really good thing, so yeah, cmizapper.com. 50 euros for the USB tester, 60 euros for this, but he said he will do deals on them. Um, I don't know how many of them I'll be able to buy in bulk, to be honest, because, yeah, I'd have to see what demand I'd get. I'd probably have to put them on pre-order and see what demand I'd get for them, I guess. But yeah, pretty, pretty good. They work pretty well. Um, they're really, really good for rapid testing. You know, if you just want to see if you... like, For example, I've just done that trace repair. Uh, let's say you've got someone who reassembles for you, like Northridge Fix has. Uh, so if Northridge Fix had one of these on his bench, just... No, that's a USB one. I knew that. I well, could have told me. Damn it. Yeah, let's say Northridge Fix has got one on his bench. He just plugs it in like that. He's like, yeah, that works. That turns on. Absolutely fine. Now pass it to Big Boss to actually reassemble it and then test it properly. It's a really, really quick, surefire way of testing, I suppose. Here we go again with the wrong tester, yeah. Yeah, that works. Uh, let's flip it around and just see how it works on the other side. See if it shows up on the other side clearly. Oh, I can see clearly now the test is done. And I can see all LEDs in the way. <laughs> Here we go again, we're singing, you mean? <laughs> yeah, that works pretty well, so good shit. Happy days. CMIZapper.com. Boom. Yeah, they work.
Nice deal. What deal was that? I did mention, yeah, maybe a case or something, but um, I'm sure someone could make something 3D printed, you know. But they're pretty good. I like them. Thank you, uh, CMI. Appreciate it, mate. Text on need case. He's giving instant feedback. He's perfect. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, obviously the the ports are exposed and the, there is the potential to, for them to break. It depends how careful you are with them. I mean, those will get put away. They'll get put in my tub until, well, put on my shelf until I need them. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty good. I'll probably use that more often. Uh, why am I unplugging that? But yeah, this will get a full test tomorrow. Um, testing consoles fully is boring. Um, obviously, we're here to fix stuff. That seems to be working absolutely fine. Uh, so I'll put a normal hard drive in it tomorrow. Unless the customer wants to buy an SSD. Wink, wink. <laughs> but no. Um, yeah, I'll put a normal hard drive in that tomorrow and I'll get it put back together. I'll get it fully tested, but it should be absolutely fine. Uh, shouldn't be any reason why 4K wouldn't work on that now. Good stuff. So that will all get put to one side. Let's grab the screws. And it'll get reassembled tomorrow. What deal is Steve talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, cmoizappa.com. But I'm going to, I'll see if we can work something out in terms of me being able to sell them on the store, maybe. We'll see. Definitely. Right, should we get on to the next one? The next job is going to be a PS5. I think it's just a basic HDMI port, to be honest, but yeah. Didn't know you were a Jimmy Cliff fan. I like some of his song, songs. I like a bit of everything. I gave a busker uh, £5 earlier in Wolverhampton City Centre for um, singing Bob Marley. It's pretty good, Jamaican guy. Really, really good. I can appreciate good music. But I was brought up on reggae. Um, like old school reggae. Classic, the classics. Proper reggae, none of this shit that you listen to today. Order a HDMI test and send a message that you saw it here with Phil. I'll add a USB tester for free this coming week. Oh, that's pretty cool, mate. Um, I'll announce that on the video um, when I do um, when I do edit it down into a video, and I'll let you know. That's pretty cool. Kids these days, UB40. Uh, yeah, I like UB40, but it's not. Really reggae? Not really. It is and it isn't. It's kind of in between. The Type-C USB test would be interesting. I might have to look into that. Right. I'm going to grab a coffee and the next job
And I'm back. Right. So let me just unpack this next job. Do you have a PS5 1100 and can you show me how the motherboard ribbon cable goes in? Um, which ribbon cable is that, mate? Is that the disk drive cable? Do you mean the one that goes into the disk drive? Well, I'm going to be careful here because there's some uh, information on here. I don't know if it's got a name on it or anything. Um, I know who it belongs to because the name was written on the box, but let's just check. USB C and USB. Right, okay. Give me a minute. Uh, let me just remove this. Uh, I can actually show you on this console because it's the same on all of them. Is it the 1100 or the 1200 you're referring to? Uh, because they are different. Uh, this is just going to be a HDMI uh, port, I think, so going to be rather boring, but it's still a job, nonetheless. Yeah, I'll show you when I uh, disassemble this then. Right, so... Fold that over, but it says faulty HDMI port. Console works if you move the HDMI cable, so it looks like the port's just been damaged on it. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to pair that on. Uh, Oi, focus, you prick. Yeah, I'm not going to pair that on. Definitely not pairing that on. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I use an Atom ST862D, mate. Uh, well, this model is the... Um, this is the 1016A, but, so this is going to be the um, EDM010 motherboard. Ooh, a Virgin console, I like it. It's nice to get a Virgin console. Boom. Let's break that warranty. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, on the on the 1000 and the 1100 series, they are both exactly the same, how they're assembled. So, uh, damn it, that's the wrong screwdriver. Let's put that back, because otherwise I'll lose it. But yeah, the, the 1000 and the 1100 series are pretty much assembled the same way, apart from, obviously there's less, there's two less antennas, and that's pretty much it. Disconnect from the internet three times per hour. <laughs> Damn it, my freaking magnet. Stop it. Uh, there's no motherboard connector, it goes in the front, which is where I'm stuck at in the faceplate. Right, bear with me a second because I've got one on the desk. Uh, I have one right here. Uh, do you mean this side? 
You mean it's stuck on this side? So this is the part what goes in the front here. Yeah, I saw the launch on YouTube as well. We all watched it on Discord. The Blue Ribbon, yeah, okay. Uh, right, let me find one if I can. Um, I don't think I've got a ribbon immediately to hand. Uh, but basically, what you need to do is... Actually, you know what? I'll show you when I've taken... Actually, have I got one? Have I got a spare front panel here? Yeah, there's a ribbon. I can use that. Um, so, it's the same as the EDM 010 board, um, but you have to push on this retention clip, so there's a retention clip here, you have to push on that, and then you can pull it in and out, that sounds really bad doesn't it, um, but if it does somehow come out, like that, then just you got to take this apart so you got to take this bit off which I'll show you how to do in a minute but then you just got to remove that metal bracket that just slides off once you've unscrewed the three screws on here and then just push on that like this retention clip here push on that retention clip and then just pop it in hey kip you legend everyone go check check kip hikes out Guys, a legend. How's your my tester ordered about to order the Type C tester too? Nice, nice one, to, uh, Gordon. Yeah, but I'll show you how to take this uh, thing off here in a minute because um, I'll have to service this as well. It's never been opened. Let me get a link to Kip Hakes's uh, channel quickly. He doesn't just do repairs, he does some vlogs too as well. Keep hikes. Yes, check me out. <laughs> I need some more stickers, mate. Can you send me some? I need a new sticker on my desk. I've had a new mat. <laughs> I need a new Keep and Chips sticker. I say morning well time flies, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just posted a link to Kip's channel. Go check him out, guys, honestly. He's a great guy. Order the HDMI tester. Nice. Thanks for supporting him, uh, Lee. I'll wait till you repair an 1100 model. Uh, well, they're the same. They are put together exactly the same. The only difference is the um, the antennas, and that's it. Um, so there's one extra antenna in the 1000 series. That's literally the only difference. I don't think I have an 1100 series to hand, to be honest. I don't think I've got one lying around. I can see clearly now, rain is gone. Now I'll get the Type A tester for free. <laughs> I think that's what he said, yeah. Nice. They're coming from Germany, aren't they? Um, say am I? I don't know your name, mate. I'm sure he said it on the note, but I can't remember it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, this definitely needs a service. Right. One thing I do with these is, you know, if you, uh, you've got this uh, sticker here covering this ribbon. I don't disturb that. I remove it from the disk drive end. And I remove it from that end. And then I can just... Lift the disk drive away. 
and leave the ribbon in situ. Netherlands. Oh, right, okay. Um, I saw it was Dutch post. I didn't know what country it was coming from. Yeah, I'll just leave that ribbon there. I don't move it. If it hasn't been damaged and removed before, I'll leave it. Now comes the tedious task of removing 500 screws. I'm good, thanks, Tom. How are you, mate? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Notice some people when they clean up flux, they put a white paper towel on the board and brush onto it. Um, yeah, that's just because it it does actually work better. I'm just a lazy little prick, to be honest. Um, but using a towel with the um, with the IPA and the brush, it does work a lot better than just using the brush. I'm just a lazy prick. I just yeah. I just don't do it. Clean room wipes work pretty well as well. Did they need that many? That. Yeah, it is annoying, it is overkill, but it's there for a reason. Did I lose connection again? Four thousand screws later. Sorry, I haven't got a SpongeBob time card to hand. Right, with these, I also don't damage these if I can help it. Because then I can stick the antenna back down as, it sit, as it's meant to sit. I'll try and slide them out instead of ripping them. Because I'm not a savage, and I like to take care of my customer's stuff. There we go. Good shit. Right. So yeah, EDM O one O board. Like I said, press on the retention clip and then pull it out. And then slowly lift up the board because they do have a little bit of pressure on them. There you go. A uh, little bit of a dry spot on the liquid metal, but that's fine. Uh, right, I'll disassemble the rest of the housing in a minute and clean it, but for now let's just do the HDMI port. Yeah, so looking under the scope here now, you can actually see just how bad it is. So, if you take a look at that now... 
Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> well, there we go. So let's remove that. And some flux. And away we go. So I don't use any low melt solder or anything on these. I don't see the point. Let's get rid of that foam. So if you heat it up enough, then you won't tear the pads. So I'll keep giving it a wiggle every so often until I see that it's loose. And I don't pull up on the port till it is. Like now, for example. But even when I see it's loose, I still give it a few more seconds because I don't want to risk it. It's not a massive deal to actually replace the pads. It's just annoying. Tomato kite. Okay, kite. I hear you. I still hear you. What? Don't meow at me. Milo. Milo. Good boy. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go and feed him. <laughs> Annoying little thing. Uh, let me go feed him. All right, Milo, I'm coming. Come on. Come here. And I'm back. So annoying. <laughs> so annoying. He's certainly vocal, let's put it that way. Uh, let's grab a new HDMI port. I do know a store online that sells these HDMI ports. High quality V2 ports. And they're happy to provide them to you. <laughs> oh dear. Console fix. Well, 
We have four kitties, they're hilarious. Two are enough for me, mate. Give me your money. Oh, yes. Give me your money. My log gets priority. To be fair, you, you're actually not wrong. You're actually not wrong. Uh, as long as I'm not actively soldering something, I will stop what I'm doing to feed the cats. Or to let them outside or whatever. Uh, Milo will finish his food in a minute. He'll come back in and he'll start me out again because he'll want to go outside. And just shit away all my money. Let's wait for that solder to flow. There we go. So when this when the solder goes flat like that, I know that it's pushed all the way through. I'll give the port a wiggle. Press and hold while I wait for it to solidify. And done. Any more thoughts on vlogs? Uh, not yet. Um, the house is still a little bit upside down from moving, so not yet. Soon. Give this a nudge test, but I'm pretty confident that this should be nicely soldered. Yep. Don't even need to do anything else to that. Apart from clean it up. Just clean it up. And that's it. Good stuff. Don't need to touch it. Don't need to retouch up any of those pins. Happy days. Just clean up the flux and go. Just clean up the flux and go. And the solder should be... Pretty good on the other side as well, on the ground legs. Same as I always do. Even though no flux would have got into the port, still clean it. Cool. Good stuff. Happy days. Just dry that off. Good as new. Good as new. Bit of IPA left there, but that's not a problem. Let's just sort out this liquid metal. So there's a bit of a dry spot there, as you can see, which is pretty typical. But we can sort that out. Let's collect up the liquid metal. Using some isopropyl alcohol. We've actually got a bit of splattering on here as well. 
We've actually had some of the liquid metal leak out. In my opinion, there's too much liquid metal on these from factory. And I'm not saying that because I hate Sony. I'm not saying it because any other reason other than because I believe it. I believe it to be true. There's too much liquid metal on these from factory. So I always take a little bit off once I've collected it all up. So what I do is I group it all up into a ball. Collect it all up. Like so. There we go. So look at that. That shouldn't have that much on. It really, really shouldn't have that much on. So what I tend to do is I tend to take an empty syringe and just, well, I actually need to group some of it back up first. But then Take an empty syringe and just take a little bit of it out. Because you really do not need that much. Less is more on these. And I have never, ever in the hundreds upon hundreds of PS5s I've worked on, I've never had one come back for overeating issues under warranty. Never. So, yeah, there we go. So that's good. It's all nice and clean, ready to go. HDMI port on the back. Beautiful. Sold it really well. But I've never had one come back with a complaint of overheating, unless it's been like a year. Like I've had them come back not under warranty. I've had, I've had them come back, but just not under warranty. Like I've had them come back like a year later saying, oh yeah, it's overheating, can you give it a service? But that's normal. You know, it's, uh, it's one of them things. Let me just put this board to one side a minute. I'm sure you're not going to accuse me of swapping the board over. Not as forgiving as thermal pace, you'll throw your circuits if you put too much. Yeah, pretty much, mate. But if you look at that, you saw, you saw how much was on that, right? And then look at this. Because there's still a shit ton on the, on the actual housing itself, like on the actual heatsink. So I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to collect it all up. But there's still loads on here. Like you look at how much is on here. And this is why it puddles up and pushes down to one side. Bear in mind, this had never been opened. This was a, this was factory sealed. Uh, not factory sealed. I'm not going to say that because I'll get accused of lying. It had the warranty sticker on it from factory. And yes, I know you can buy them warranty stickers from consolefix.shop. And I know they look just as original as factory. But the point remains. This has never been opened. It's never been worked on. And that 
is a lot of liquid metal. That is a lot of liquid metal. You changed the chassis. <laughs> oh, look, we've got bots. Cheers, Pops, for taking care of that, mate. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, that's a lot of liquid metal, guys. Come on. You can't deny it. Oh, I'm going to push the rest of this. This was empty, this, this uh, syringe. You know, you can't really tell how much I've taken out, but... That's all I need on this part. Trust me, that is all I need. Just enough... to re-prep the area, and that is literally all I need. That's it. That's all we need. Resells liquid metal. I do reuse it. You are, you're not wrong. If I need it, I reuse it, yeah. Um, but it's just too much. It's just... I'm doing this... Literally, I'm taking it off for warranty purposes. I don't want this coming back in a week's time saying, oh, yeah, it's been splatted around while it's been in transit. So, yeah. It probably is still a little bit too much, yeah. It's profit, just like having screws left over. You got it. You got it. <laughs> But no, that is, that is probably still too much. Well, no, I don't know, because that's a really, really thin layer, so that probably isn't too much, but... Yeah. Um... It's just one of them. That's been dropped. Because that weren't me. That's why we've got the splatter, because it's been dropped. I'm not saying it's just happened randomly. That has been dropped. I didn't pull that back that far. I pulled it back, like, half an inch. So, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, this has been dropped, this console has. But hey-ho. All is good. In love and what? How's it going, Pray? How you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing well, mate. Right, let's get rid of the dust bunny, shall we? Let's collect it all up. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Rid of it. Rid of it. Let me just get a brush, actually. One moment. Damn it, I'm tethered because my charger's plugged in. Because I forgot to charge my mics again. Ha! I hate being tethered. Ugh. Half the freaking dust just fell down on the floor. Do 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 do. I do this, like I said earlier, I do this to every single console. If I'm inside the console, yes, it takes a couple of minutes, but it's not going to come back for overheating then. Right, there's the heat sink clean. Look at that. Power supply, done. Right, so once the power supply is out, that lifts out. 
a few cat hairs or dog hairs in here, but hey ho. Uh, so to the person that was wondering earlier, um, to remove that, as you saw, just take the two screws out the base, um, lift off the actual heat sink, lift off the power supply, and then you can take this out, and there's three screws in it. And then from there you can take this plate off and then you can get to the actual connector. It's not very difficult. It's pretty easy, actually. Yeah, I, I just made a habit of doing this. You know, when I first started doing repairs, I made a habit of cleaning out the console while I was working on it in terms of like other repairs, like if we if it came in for a service, then obviously they pay for a service if that's all it's coming for. But I don't mind spending an extra five to ten minutes just to give it a clean out and whatnot. I don't get all you know like meth methodical. You know, I don't I don't sit there for ages to get in every single nook and cranny. But you know, unless it's actually getting a service, then I would. But I'll get the majority of the dust out and make sure it's nice and clean. And there we go. Same with that side. Give it a brush down. And now this console's good for 18 months. Why don't you get a vacuum? Um, honestly, it's too late at night. Uh, my kids are asleep upstairs. Can't really be running a vacuum at this time of night anyway. I have got one. Um, I have got a... I have got a little mini vacuum which I can use. It's just too late at night. It's too noisy for the kids. I don't want to wake them up. So... Let's try and uh, clean it out with a brush instead. Phil's not DK old, he's handing it over dusty ass consoles. <laughs> that is true. If you get a console from me, if you buy a console from me, because I do sell consoles sometimes. Uh, I've got a couple on the store now. I sold one this afternoon, actually. Um, but yeah, if you buy one from me, it will always be clean. Always. If I've, if I've opened that console up to repair it at all, it will be clean, no matter what. Right. I don't believe in not cleaning it out if you're inside the console anyway. I think we should all be doing it. Treat our customers with a little bit more respect because they do pay our bills at the end of the day. That's my opinion. I mean, everyone, everyone's got their own opinion, but my opinion is those customers feed our families. Treat them with a little bit of respect. They're not just a number on a screen. They're not just a ticket number. I do try and have some respect for my customers. Right, there we go. Good shit. This housing's actually damaged. Um, look at that. That part of the HDMI, but really nothing I can do about that without replacing the mid frame. Actually, I never checked the HDMI port, the USB ports. Yeah, they're fine. The one thing you get with some of the time when you've got a damaged HDMI is damaged USB ports. That's tripped me up a few times, um, and I've ended up sending them back to the customer without checking them. And that's why now I'll go through a specific testing process when I'm actually testing things, because it did trip me up a few times. I don't give a goat, what do you mean, mate? If he has to break out the gloves, it's bad. Yeah, to be fair, it's very rare I actually wear gloves. I've got gloves. I've got I've got a stack of gloves all over the place. I wear The main thing I wear gloves for, because I bleach my hands. I was talking about this earlier. I actually bleach my hands. Like I, I know my hands are a little bit dirty now. I do have the USB tester now, yeah. That is very true. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I was on about this earlier. I, I know my hands are dirty now because I've been working with dust and stuff, but I actually bleach my hands like because someone said why, and I was like, because I, I like my hands clean. Like, when I finish working tonight, my hands will get bleached. I know it's not good for you. I know it's not good for your hands and whatever, but, yeah, you know, it causes dermatitis. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but I do bleach my hands because I like clean hands. So if I do break out gloves, it's usually when I've got something like um, cat pee or something. If a customer said, yeah, this is cat pee. Uh, I, do, I do tend to wear gloves when I'm working with liquid damage or if it's something I know that I'm going to get a lot of flux with, or something I know I'm going to use a lot of flux with, I tend to use the gloves. But, yeah, for the most part, for the most part, I don't. You can't pay comment. On Xbox One S's and Xbox One Originals, yeah. They're attracted to the warmth. They're attracted to the warmth of the, uh, of the console. You sit on top of the console, the owner's like, oh, ain't that cute? And then all of a sudden, yeah, no, your console don't work anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's all cute and fun and games until they start pissing on your consoles. <laughs> but it is quite common, yeah. Um, right, I'm going to use, before I put this back together, I'm actually going to use the USB, the uh, HDMI tester. Um, so rather than putting it back together, I'm just going to make sure I've actually got a HDMI signal. Hmm. It looks like we've got no data signals here. We've only got one. Okay, that's weird. Oh, hang on. Have we got... I think we've got flux in the port still. It's either flux in the port or it's flux in this. Let's try this. It's either flux in the port or flux in this. There you go. Don't know if that's normal that it's blinking on a PS5. Obviously, none of this is screwed down, so it's quite loose, but I don't know if that's normal that it's blinking, but it appears to be working. Yeah, so one of the problems, so I mean, you you would have seen me clean this out, this cable. So it's either flux in this. Uh, this is a problem with technicians, and it's kind of, it kind of gives you false, false readings and stuff because you get flux in the port, flux in the cables, all of that, all of that stuff. Not seeing it blinking. That could just be a PS5 thing, maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's. Say, I'm going to test it on the screen anyway, just to make sure. Ugly cam. Yeah, it's working. So that must be a PS5 thing. Um, but yeah, that's working sweet. Um, I'll just check the USB. Okay, we've got data on the USB. That did blink when I first plugged it in. Uh, so I'll give that a second. Don't ice all your, ha your hands, yeah. Is it bad if my HDMI port gets very hot? Yes, I would say it is, mate. Um, that's not normal for your port to get hot, yeah. Has that blinked on screen? Because I wasn't looking at it. Sexy cam. <laughs> Oi, blink, you bastard. Blink. No? Yeah, oh, as I go to plug it, uh, to unplug it, yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems okay now, now that I've just cleaned out the cable, but... Hmm. I guess that's just a PS5 thing. I don't know. 
Uh, maybe because it's in 4K. Is it in 4K? Let's have a look. Is it in 4K? Right, are you going to tell me what resolution you're in? Yeah, 3840, 2160, so that is working in 4K. There you go. Um, yeah, good stuff. Seems to be working fine. I'll shut it down now, put it back together. It used to be nice and neat. <laughs> yeah, that don't stay neat for long. <laughs> right, good stuff. I guess that's I guess that blinking on this cable on this uh, connector is just a PS5 thing, so maybe that's normal. I'll keep testing it on different consoles as I continue working on it. Good stuff. Another job done. So I'm going to put these back together just because of the amount of screws there is on the device. Normally I'll put them back together the day after, but meh. Yeah. Like if I was if I was on stream, normally I'd be putting them back together tomorrow, but with this one, because there's so many screws and I haven't got any anywhere to store them at the minute, I'm just gonna put it back together it don't take too long at least then I can just get it ready to ship out tomorrow invoice the customer for the repair and job done By the way, if you're wondering why I'm missing some out, it's because there's not meant to be a screw there. Oh no, it's not just the screws being installed, mate. I've got I've got a couple of them tubs still, but um I've really got no room to store the console disassembled, so I'm just going to put it back together and then I can just chuck it back in its box. Literally, a little secret of mine, when I'm, when I'm finished with the customer's console and I'm not on video, I'll just throw it. 
Hope it breaks again so I can invoice them twice. <laughs> Sorry, mate, something else wrong. <laughs> I'm only joking. <coughs> I invoice them three times instead. <laughs> 50 million screws later. Yeah, so this is tedious, but it's got to be done. And I haven't really got any room to store any more consoles partially disassembled. I'm nearly there anyway now. Right, there's that, and now, because I didn't break these, because I didn't break the stickers, I can put it back exactly as it's meant to go. That one actually did slightly break, but it's all good. Damn it, jumper wire. There we go. PS5 has infinite screws. Yep. It does indeed. Or we use those retention clips because you will break the connectors. I see it so many times. And those connectors are a pain in the ass. If someone sends me something with one of them connectors broken, I'm charging them £75. Genuinely, because those connectors are a pain in the arse to change. They're not fun at all. Be careful with this as well. I just nearly made a crucial mistake. Be careful with that ribbon, because if you break that ribbon and screw into it, you're going to cause a triple beep of death. Video incoming, by the way. Yeah, make sure that ribbon's sitting properly because you'll end up with a triple beep of death when you turn it on. Right, I just need to clean out the fan. So yeah, like I said, when it's just part of the normal repair, I don't get all meticulous with the fan, I'll just give it a basic dust out. Cheers, Nick. Thanks, mate. If you screw into the cable, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now, it will actually cause a triple beep of death, so what will happen is the console will turn on, and this is an issue from factory as well, by the way. The console will actually turn on and it'll appear to boot up, but then as soon as it, as soon as it boots up to a white light, it'll go beep, 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 as if it's overheating, and then it'll just shut down, and it'll do that indefinitely. 
until you change the cable. I'm going to make a, vi a video on it because one of the viewers, Spanner, uh, I think he's in the chat still, but he recently had one. Um, we've known about it for, well, I've known about it for quite a while, as well as some of the other guys on Discord, but... Um, yeah, the last one I had, stupidly, I threw the cable away before I made a video on it. Um, but we've known about it for about six months. So Spanner's sending me uh, the broken ribbon so as I can replicate the issue and make a video on it. Oh, long screw. Might help if I got the right long screw. Dang, can you? But yeah, Spanner's sending me a ribbon so I can make a video, replicate the issue. So, big thanks to Spanner if he's still in the chat. He's good people. How often should you clean the fan? I'd say once a year is sufficient. Every 12, every 12 to 18 months is more than enough. Uh, I'm actually doing a video on it soon because it's been almost 18 months since I serviced my kids' consoles. So I'm actually going to be doing a video on it pretty soon. Yeah, you will sit down, Case. Oh, you're Huckleberry. Um, oh, wait, no, that's all. Uh, yeah, sorry, that's all uh, existing members. Sorry, that's why you didn't come up. Cool. Thank you to the renewals. Thank you for your money. Right, let's just flip this over. Two screws back in the back. These ones are different to the rest of them, by the way. Cool. Good stuff. And by the way, don't take the screw from there and put it in there because you'll drill straight through your HDMI encoder. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying, don't do it, it's not good for you. I hate these fan grills. Yeet. Make sure it still powers on. One final time. And then I'll give it a full test tomorrow. 
disk drive is a little bit iffy. So I just heard it. I just heard the disk drive rattle a little bit when I first powered it on, so that could be uh, that could be an issue. But we'll test it. Get that warranty sticker on. Uh, warranty sticker will go on just before it comes back. It needs a full test first. But warranty sticker, uh, sorry, just before it goes out, it needs a full test first. I'm just going to make sure it still powers on. Uh, make sure it's all good. So I test it before I reassemble it and after I reassemble it. But I'll give it a full test off camera, and then as long as it passes all my tests, I'll um, I'll put a warranty sticker on it. There you go. Good stuff. Just use your own and track the number on it. Oh, I've got custom warranty stickers, mate, with my logo on them. Uh, don't know where they are, but. I've got some. Um, yeah, custom warranty stickers with my own logo. They cannot be replicated. See, I have got some warranty stickers which I use for some stuff. But for PS5s, I've got custom ones with my logo on. Uh, but yeah, you can use them ones, like them numbered ones, for example. But nah, I use my own custom ones. Right, good stuff. Cheers, Gordon. Thanks, mate. You need a lab to do it. Nah, you don't need a lab to repair stuff. Just need a couple of good tools. Thousand pounds worth of tools. And fix anything. Uh, no worries, Major. Have a good night, mate. Right, good stuff. Yeah, then I'll get a full test tomorrow. Then a warranty sticker will get put on it. And, uh, yeah. Happy days. Hammer. <laughs> No worries, Taylor. Have a good one. Cheers, Alice. How's the weather? Uh, not so bad today. I know it was raining in London, uh, but not so bad today. Right, let's get one more job and another cup of coffee, shall we? And uh, I'll tell you what, let's grab a smoke as well. How's that? I think, I, uh, I think I've earned a little bit of a couple of minute break, don't you? What model is this? That was a that was a one thousand series, a ten sixteen. I don't think I've got any uh, eleven hundred series in. To be honest, how come I don't vape? Uh, because I think it's worse for you than smoking. In my opinion, mate. I think it's worse for you than smoking, mate. Can the SBV chip you've got for purchase on console fix be used for the other side of F7002? Uh, yes, on the EDM R10 board, yes. Uh, so the, on the EDM R10, if there's... Um, if you've got the... If you've got the SBV chip where F7002 is, then there's one on the other side of it as well. It's exactly the same chip. I want to see some more fixing. <laughs> right, I'll be back in a minute. Time for a cup of coffee and another job. Just as soon as I've translated that. Hmm. Okay. English only in the chat or your message will be deleted. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I do remember that QS. Yeah, I just translated it myself. But why is, why is the account called Console Fix? That's what I want to know. Why if I speak Skosa? <laughs> nah, Travis ain't killed another one yet. Right. Give me two minutes, I'll grab another job and a cup of coffee. Okie doke. Does anyone know why Booter isn't streaming? I was wondering that as well. Right. This one maybe took a little bit. To be honest, it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> Welcome from the USA. Hope you're doing well, mate. This one maybe chuckled a little bit when I received it. So I got this with a note, um, and it said, because this has come from, uh, it's come from overseas, so I think Germany or somewhere, somewhere overseas. Uh, but it says. Uh, no power supply, but I have a good excuse. The package weighs 2.2 kg with the power supply and costs 30 euros. But without the PSU, it's under 2 kg and costs 12 euros to ship. So yeah, 
if it works for you instantly, I'll know why. So that made me laugh a little bit. So what they've done is, um, because it's, uh, let me find out exactly where it's from actually while I'm talking. Um, so because they've, they wanted to save on shipping, they've removed the power supply. So I'm assuming it's a no power issue because it says if it works for you instantly, then you know why. And this is from... Uh, oh, hang on, there's another note here. Uh, PR, where's PR? Pramones, PR, I don't know. Pramones. Uh, let me have a look at the CN22. Lithuania. Okay, cool. It's from Lithuania. Right, there's another note in here. Uh, didn't see this one. It was with the booking sheet. So, yeah, this has been sent from Lithuania. Um, so it says... Oh, it actually says where it's from. Um, all right, well, never mind. Uh, greetings from Lithuania. Uh, first time I'm reading this. Greetings from Lithuania. I found out about your repair shop on YouTube. Keep up the great work and the education. People need it. Tried fixing my console, but no luck. Really awesome videos. But here I'm sending my console for repair because it has an... Oh, damn it. Uh, now I've got to read that note again. Um, sorry, guys. Disconnected. Um... Yeah. <coughs> Conspiracy time indeed. It boot us fault. What a cunt. <laughs> uh, right, so he says, found out about your repair shop from YouTube. Uh, really appreciate that, thank you. Uh, tried fixing my console, but no luck. Really awesome videos, thank you. Uh, here I am sending my console for repair because it has an error I've never seen, E109. I'm on a tight budget, so I do hope that this repair will not be expensive. That kind of explains the power supply being removed. Uh, new SSD is in the console and has the raw data file in it. Also tried other power bricks, but no change. Hope you can make it work. Thanks in advance and hope to see the repair in the video. Cool. Awesome. I've never heard of an E109 error code. Never heard of an E109 error code, ever. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of research on it first and see if there's any information online. Uh, could that be... E106, could that be meant to be E106 maybe? Because there's no info on E109 at all. There's no information on E109. But they've removed the power supply, so I'm going to at least have to disassemble it to the point where I can put the power supply in. Or a power supply, should I say. So I'm going to have to use my own test supply. E109 equals PSU in Lithuania. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it means. I've never heard of an E109 error code. So. Let's have a look. See what we can figure out, shall we? So. Here's a power supply I made earlier. So let's have a look. Let's have a look, she. So as long as this actually boots and turns on, then... Oh, hang on. No. No. 
No, that is not booting up and turning on. I don't think I can do anything without the original SSD on this one. No. No. Can't get it into safe mode either. Uh, yeah, that is very likely going to be down to the fact that this is a mismatched SSD. So there's nothing I can do. Yeah. I don't think there's anything I can do with this. I think I need to contact the customer and get that original SSD sent over because I can't fault find it properly without that. Uh, you can, but you need the original SSD to be at least working to a point where you can clone it. It's all good. Yeah, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move on. I'm not gonna work on this tonight, I'm going to have to contact the customer and request the original SSD to be sent over because, yeah, can't do nothing without it. You can use one of the 18, one of some of the 18 year olds he saved on postage, yeah. That's going to suck for them, but there's not really a lot I can do, not without that original SSD. Um, I at least need to original SSD to ensure a correct clone has been sent um, or rather to ensure that a correct clone has been installed I will double check the box in a second and make sure the original SSD isn't inside but realistically I should have sent the original SSD over there's not a lot I can do with that Gotta be careful as well when you putting these back together. You know what? I'm gonna leave them screws out for now. I'm not risking damaging the board. There's no there's no power supply in there to guide the screws in, so yeah, I'm gonna leave that as it is. Put it all back in the box. It's screwed, yep. Maybe they would sell that top cover. I've got top covers, mate, if you need any. Oh, you have top covers. I've got a few, actually. Right, let's just pop these in a bag. Hang on a sec. But, yeah, can't really work on that. The problem is, I can sit there trying to fault find that beep on beep off, and it's most likely going to be down to the SSD. Um, and there's no way to get it to boot. SSD should have been included, yeah. Never mind, it's fine. I'll put it to one side, work on it once I've contact the contacted the customer. So the problem is, I don't know whether or not this um, SSD has been cloned over properly. So, without that original SSD, I'm really not willing to work on it at all. Not willing to touch it without that original, the original SSD. 
it's just not worth wasting my time on. Unfortunately. And I quite frankly I've got other things I could be doing. So never mind. It is what it is. For now. It's not in the box by the way. Um Right, what else do we have? Disk drive does not accept disks. I swapped daughter board into working drive, but no joy, so I swapped them back over. I have added three Xbox One X parts for you. Yeah, let's work on an Xbox One X, why not? Right, what do we have here? I've got... An Xbox board, an Xbox disk drive, an Xbox power supply, and an Xbox One X with a bunch of parts. Cool. Right. Okay, let me put the quote spare parts to one side for now. Just see if there's anything else in the box. I don't think there is. Good. Ow! I just freaking leak up my table. Right, okay, so we've got an Xbox One X here, and apparently it's not accepting discs. So let's have a look. First of all, and see what the deal is. Shall we? Cool. Turns on. It's in good condition, that is. I have to take my car for a service tomorrow, inspired by the Xbox. I'm going to take the engine out tonight to save on petrol. Mate, that is brilliant thinking. Fantastic way of thinking. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll go take my. Uh, I've got. To, I've got to find my insurance actually because my front windscreen's cracked. I nearly made a real fuck up earlier. I got halfway to Wolverhampton City Centre from home, and then I realised I had no. I had no tax on my car because it went out. I had to tax my freaking car while I was on the main road. <laughs> I had to pull over, tax my car, and then I could carry on driving. I didn't realise it's been run out for two weeks. And I've been driving around. <laughs> Never mind. It happens. I'm sure it's happened to all of us. But yeah, I need to phone my car insurance because my windscreen's cracked. Never mind. It happens. Right, okay, so I've got a display. Let's go to Ugly Cam and uh, you know what? I don't even know if I've got an Xbox disc lying around to hand. Not one in there. Um, I'll grab one out of my own games. Save me hunting. Bear with me. That'll do. 
Doom. Doom. Okay, yeah, so that's not accepting a disc at all. So, as you can see, not taking a disc at all. Good shit. All right, now we've got a repair on our hands. Right then, laddie. Shut that down. Uh, although it'll cost you more short term, better to get the windscreen replaced yourself and get any insurance to do it. I'll just put you up your premiums next year. Uh, no, because I've got protected no claims and I've also got um, separate windscreen cover, so I'm all good. Um, they want my insurance shouldn't increase for it because I'm fully comp. I've got separate windscreen cover and I've got protected no claims anyway, so it's all good. Doom dispute depends on your perspective to me, read wood. Ha! Love it. Right, let me just uh, pop that out. Yeah, so my premiums won't go up if I fail my insurance. So apparently another disk drive has been tried. So it's either going to be, it's likely either going to be a PCB issue or a board issue. More likely than not, it's going to be a board issue, to be honest. Does he sell kidneys? Depends on the price. I'll sell anything for the right price. Sell my grandmother's pension. If you give me enough money for it. <laughs> fuse for the disk drive. Um, I don't think there is a fuse on these. I'm not sure. Woody's cooler. <laughs> I've got a personal collection of ga collection of games. I haven't even got an Xbox anymore. Sold it last week. <laughs> Not even joking. I sold my Xbox last week to a customer. I'm a I'm a fucker for doing that though. To be fair, I mean, see, the, the Xbox, my Xbox Series X was, um, it was the first video, first Series X video I ever did. Well, sorry, no, the first Series X I ever bought myself for repair on eBay, so I kept it. Um, and uh, a customer sent me a console that I couldn't fix. He really wanted one. He was in for a fair bit of money, so I said, look, I'll take yours as part exchange and uh, give me £150 cash and you can have mine. It works absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with it. it. It hasn't even been used in six months, sort of thing. Uh, and he did, so I sold it to him. I don't mind. Um, to be fair, I made like eight hundred pound off the video, so I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> I made more than enough just off the video, so I really don't care. It was a really high-performing video. That's not a normal amount to make off a video. I made that first PS5 video, you fell asleep. 
Was it that boring? <laughs> uh, you know, you can get a magnetizer for screwdriver bits. Yeah, but they're still not as strong. This is neodymium. Oh, I tried to get clever and it didn't work. I tried to catch it with the screwdriver. It didn't work. Wee! Oh, you prick. <laughs> didn't work. Fail. Yeah, these are neodymium magnets, so they're like, oh, stop it, just work, thank you, see, really good. Look, you can just, you can usually just throw them on the magnet. I've talked a lot, fair enough. Yeah, I was trying to just get it, get the point across of it, about it, well, um, you know. One of them. Right, so one thing that I've worked out over the past, oh, and actually, let me get your opinions on this. Uh, I'm going to post a poll in a second. Um, so, that PS5 video where I've done... Um, well, I've managed to turn it into a digital edition console. I've tried to go the other way, where I'll take a disc edition, a digital edition, and turn it into a disc edition. Um, I haven't, I haven't uploaded the video. I haven't even recorded a video on it yet because I've just been researching. But um, I can say now it can't be done, or it seems like it can't be done. Uh, so I can't take a, disc edi a digital edition and turn it into a dig disc edition, even with the matching BIOS and disk drive daughter board. But, and I'm not sure if it's possible, I'm going to be trying it. I've bought like 10, 11 Blu-ray discs today. Um, do you think that, in general, not just not just... For example, yourself, but in general, would it be useful for people to take a digital edition console and turn it into a disc edition so as they could have the PS5 plus a fairly high end Blu ray player at the same time? So, basically, if, you, if I could get it to work, I haven't tried it yet, I, I'm going to be trying it, but. Would it be useful to people if they could turn it into a high-end Blu-ray player? Because a, a high-quality Blu-ray player, you look at Amazon, a high-quality Blu-ray player, upwards of £300. You could turn a digital edition into a disc edition uh, for the sake of, um, like, what, £100? You can, get a, you can get a second-hand disc drive nowadays for... Well, if you've got a faulty console, for example, a faulty disk edition, you try and fix it, you can't, but you've still got the disk drive, and you put that onto a digital edition board to get it to work on, to play Blu-rays, it could potentially be viable. Everything's just streaming now. Yeah, but at the same time, Blu-rays, there's no buffering, there's no bandwidth, there's no waiting for downloads, uh, to get a high quality, but bear in mind, you're talking 4K Blu-ray here. Uh, you're talking, you know, playing Blu-ray films in 4K, ultra high, ultra high definition. And even though it's not a thing yet, the PlayStation 5 is 8K compatible. Eventually, there are going to be 8K Blu-ray films. And they're going to be supported on the PlayStation 5. I guarantee you. They're going to be supported on the PlayStation 5. How much is it going to cost you to actually buy an 8K Blu-ray player when they actually come out? And how much bandwidth are you going to need, considering you need a fair amount of bandwidth just to stream a 4K Blu-ray? Most of the UK have got less than 20 megabits a second. They can't actually stream 4K. So, in my opinion, it's, it's probably worth it. Give me a Blu-ray over streaming any day. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, because there's no wait times, there's no buffering, there's no signal loss, there's no uh, no compression. Like you think you you're playing a 4K film on on Netflix? Do you really think you're getting that in 4K? Because you're not. 
You really not. Not one. Not when you not when you factor in compression. You're not getting that film in 4K. Not proper 4K. And when 8K films come uh, become a thing, that's going to be a whole other level when it comes to actually need uh, to actually uh, streaming it. There's, you're not going to stream an 8K movie on a basic internet connection in the UK at least these days. Um, I mean, fair enough if you've got Virgin Media in the UK. Yes, you would. But there's also some countries out there which have got really bad internet. Uh, apart from Virgin Media, the only thing that I can get around here is one to three megabits per second with Virgin with uh, Sky and BT, Talk Talk, and all of those that piggyback off Open Reach's network, or 5G mobile broadband. And even 5G mobile mobile broadband is unreliable. Um, if it wasn't for Virgin Media, I would not be able to live in this house at all because I would not be able to stream. I wouldn't be able to do YouTube from this house if it wasn't for the fact that Virgin Media area. And I do see the value in a 4K Blu-ray player. I wouldn't buy a Blu-ray movie, but I know people that do, and having a player like that would be useful for them. Yeah, that's what, that's my thinking. Britain sucks for internet. It does. It really does. It's so far behind, I don't know, most countries. Most countries. We're still stuck on Doxys 4 with Virgin Media, and... Most most broadband still comes down a freaking phone line, so they can say all this. Oh, but it's fibre. No, it's not. It's a phone line. Wouldn't it be easier and cheaper to just buy a four K player? Not a decent quality one, no. Not a decent quality one, mate. You're talking three hundred pound plus for a decent quality four K player. That's almost the cost of a PS Five, right? So yeah, you could buy, you go go out and buy. If you're buying a PS5 anyway, you just and you wanted a Blu-ray player, you just get the disc edition. But some people they went with the disc digital edition because they had no choice. So I think it would be useful to some people personally. I do think it would be useful to some people. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Aussie is no better for Wi-Fi, I believe. Yeah, I mean I've got a 5G connection. Um, in fact, I'll connect it to my phone. Um, and I'll show you. Uh, it, well, actually, it's kind of pointless because it's not even connected to 5G at the minute. It's behind my monitor and it's on 4G. It's more of a backup, but I'm going to be getting a 5G antenna so as it does pick up a better signal. So, uh, I need that disk drive, don't I? Uh, let's just have a quick look around this, um, this disk drive circuit under the microscope in a second. I do need the disk drive to hand, though. But I'm telling you, 8K, 8K movies, they are going to be a thing soon. And the thing with broadband in the UK is it's way behind every other piece of technology. Way behind, especially in the UK. It's really, really bad. That belongs on the power supply, on the housing, sorry. Way behind the rest of the country, uh, the rest of the world. We've only had gigabit broadband for 18 months. Uh, mainstream, you know, like for the general public. I mean, we, we had stuff in like London and, um, you know, like big major cities, but other than that, nope. More worth it for me to make the disc edition into a digital. If you've got digital games, yeah. I have EE over here in my area. Well, I've got an EE connection. Um, I've got a 5G mobile broadband router. I'm actually paying for two connections. But the good thing is, when I go fishing, like this Sunday, I get to take that mobile broadband router with me. <laughs> but yeah, the UK internet sucks. I'm going to go Virgin, coming on 40 days, more like 30. Virgin are to have a deal where you can get 100 there and a SIM only contract for 29.99. Paying 24 for talk talk and almost £10 from a mobile, so you'll be saving. Yeah, th that's it, mate, yeah. 
How many disk drives fail and render the PS5 useless? Um, we don't know yet. There isn't many. It's not a widespread issue, but... Yeah. You bought a bolt from someone and it had an 8-track player in it and it worked. Nice. <laughs> Here in Brazil, I thought we had a really poor connection. I'll get about 30 megabit down and up. Now, for the most part, Virgin Me when Virgin Media is available, or we well, there's two major suppliers in the UK. There's Virgin Media and there's OpenReach. OpenReach is shit. <laughs> um, City Fibre is a new thing. It's not been out that long. But we can't even get City Fibre here. It's... It's not nowhere near as widespread as it needs to be. Can't get City Fibre here at all. Uh, the maximum I can get on open reach is 1 to 3 megabits per second down. Um, the only one that I can get a decent connection is Virgin Media. So, yeah. The UK sucks. The US sucks because it's majorly oversold. The US have got the infrastructure there. It's just majorly oversold. Hyperoptic 2, can't get that either. Yeah, that's pretty much just London, mate. I saw Hyperoptic about seven or eight years ago, and they've just not expanded, and they've fallen way behind. Hyperoptic are pretty much London, and that's it. I registered my interest for my old house literally when I moved in about seven years ago. Right, let's have a look at this uh, disk drive circuit first. So you've got the main power connector here, and then we've got uh, the disk drive power and the uh, disk drive SATA cable. So, let's just test. First of all, the disk drive MOSFET. So I'll go into diode mode for this. Pop my red probe on ground and we'll test the gate. Uh, we get 1.17 volts. That seems a little bit high. What about the drain? 0.5 and yeah 0.5 okay that yeah that seems a little bit high on the gate to be honest hmm let me grab a donor board because that 1.5 volt drop to ground seems a little bit high to me um i can't remember what it's meant to be but i'm gonna grab a donor board and just have a look at that so a random donor board <clears throat> Random donor board. Let's have a look. Don't know what's wrong with this donor board. Never worked on it, never tested it. It's just a donor board. Let's have a look. Ignore the beeping, by the way, because I'm too lazy to turn it off. Uh, 1.22, okay, so that is actually technically working. Uh, according to the donor board, that's correct. So, cool. Right, okay. So, let's have a look then and see. Tell you what we'll do. Take said disk drive. And we should always get power to the disk drive because the disk drive is meant to allow the console to actually turn on. So let's just see if we're actually getting power to the disk drive when I have power connected. So I'm going to connect this up to my bench power supply because if I put the power cable in, or rather if I put the uh, power supply in, it's going to... It's going to block 
my ability to test it unless I flip the board around and that's just too much work I'm a lazy technician so I'll try and avoid that whenever I can um, but I'm basically just going to supply it with 12 volts from the bench power supply and that will it won't allow me to boot the console up but it will allow me to um, replicate it having power going through it so if we look there we've got 12 volt and we've got three amps of current draw there uh, and now I'm going to struggle because I don't think I've got another uh, probe well I can just put a I can just put a crocodile clip on it and use it that way for testing with the multimeter uh, I don't actually need the uh, microscope for this I'm just zooming on the um, on the overhead to test this so yeah there's my little botch job set up I guess you could call it in fact I don't even need the crocodile clip to be honest I can just daisy chain straight off the ground into my multimeter. Uh, so I've got that daisy chained. I've got the ground point daisy chained off um, off that crocodile clip. That's the beauty about having those test leads. And then voltage mode on the multimeter. Zero volts. Zero volts. Do we get... Just make sure we actually get 12 volts. There we do. Okay. So... I've got zero volts here. Nothing whatsoever. Whatsoever coming off that connector. Uh, let's just see... Let's just see if it prompts it to boot when I put a disc in. It does, so we have got power going to that. We have got power going to that bench supply, uh, going to that drive. So that must be an issue with the disc drive itself then. Because, or not with the disc drive, with the door to board itself, because it's actually allowing it to boot up. Obviously, it's not actually going to boot up because I've got maximum five, five amps, and that's nowhere near enough to power this console. So we've got an issue with the door, with the uh, the disk drive daughter board, most likely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move that to one side, and I'm going to grab a disk drive just to try. It, it wouldn't actually allow it to read a drive. Uh, read a disc rather, but it would at least allow it to take a disc in basically. So if this if it's a disc drive daughter board issue, then I'll find out just by this, uh, just by putting a new disc drive in it, a working disc drive. Could potentially be a cable issue, but we'll find out. Let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look, see. So if this is a daughter board issue, there's a couple of options we've got. So we can... We can basically... Um, yeah. We can either try and fix the daughter board, or we could potentially just swap the, the uh, arm chip from this board to another board and get it working that way. So let's just go like that. Let's go like that. Uh, Not got 12 volts. There we go. Okay, is that going to boot up? Come on. 
Yeah, there we go. So we've got a boot sequence. Right, now let's have a look at the disk drive. Okay. Why did I not get a prompt to boot with that? Right, let's actually plug the disk drive in, the power supply in. Um, for now, let's just plug the power supply in. At least that way the console's actually going to turn on. Okay, it's not a disk drive issue. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's a uh, disk edition, mate. Paul Daniels is here. Welcome, buddy. How are you doing? Right, so that's actually turned on right now. The heatsink's fairly warm. Um, I can grab the fan just to show you that the fan's spinning. That's actually turned on right now, so it's not actually a... Um, it's not actually a disk drive issue, it is a mainboard issue. So yeah, fan's spinning. So it is turned on. I know I haven't got the front panel or anything hooked up, but... Yeah, it's all good. So now we need to figure out why the disk drive isn't taking in a disk. We need to figure out why. Let me pop the customer's disk drive to one side. And where is my X-clamp tool? Right in front of my eyes. Of course it is. Good stuff. It's the customers, yeah. What do the testers say? Um, well, it's not an issue with USB, mate, so it's not not really going to be any point in using them at the minute. I need to figure out what's going on with the actual board. Right, okay. Let's have a look, see. Let's have a nose. So I'm just hooking my probes back up to the uh, multimeter. There we go. Good stuff. Tool boy, what do you mean, mate? Fan spin indeed, yeah. Right, so I'm in resistance mode. Let's just do a few tests around here. I think that's a ground pad. Yeah. That's a ground pad. 420,000 ohms there. 15 million ohms there. That's a bit odd. Don't know if that's normal, but I'll check it in a minute. I'll check that in a minute. I don't know if that's normal. 
We've got two, three, four, five thousand arms there and climbing. Uh, so these readings all seem pretty high at like 300, 400 thousand ohms. Um, right, let me just get the schematics up. Bear with me. Schematics are available on, on our Discord, by the way. Type exclamation point Discord, you'll get a link. Uh, so, 1x schematic. Um, hmm. Right, so bear with me a sec, I'm just looking for the uh, the right page and then I'll load up the screen. Page 50. Page 50. So we've got, that's the uh, optical disk drive SATA. That's the SATA cable for data, obviously. Um, Uh, we've got some 100, 100k resistors there, so those readings are probably correct. Uh, we've got 12 volt coming in, 5 volt coming in, 3.3 volt standby pulse. So that that's obviously the um, that's obviously that uh, standby power that I was talking about. Uh, where it should be always applying power so as it can turn the console on with the disk drive. Uh, U34, optical disk drive power enable. Where's U34? Let me just try and find that on the board. U44, U45, U40. Right, so U34 is just there. How old am I? I'm 34, mate. Schematics are cheat codes. <laughs> yeah, Knight Harold. Oh, sorry, no. Knight Ellis. Have a good night, mate. Never worked on a Wii remote. Never worked on that one. Never worked on one. So on U34, where, where was that? Uh, oh no, that's hard drive power enabled. Damn it, wrong one. Where was ODD power enabled? 
I've lost it. I've lost ODD pair enable, damn it. Ah, U44 is ODD pair enable. U40, U44 Uh, resistance ten K. One of these should be ground. That one's ground. R one fifty five. What does that go to? R155 is on ODD pair enable. Okay, that was a lot of notifications. Hmm. Cheers, Havel. Thanks, mate. Yeah, night, newbie. Thanks for hanging out, Thanks for hanging out mate. All right, so R155 is supposed to be a 10K resistor. Yep, that's correct. Two point five K and a hundred K on R one fifty seven. Um R one fifty seven supposed to be a hundred ohm. I swear I was reading a hundred K then. Let me just double check that. No, I'm reading a hundred ohms. Fuck's sake. I'm an idiot. Never mind. Um Right, what else we got on here? Uh We have, it's a bit of a weird number, 34.8 thousand ohms for R80. The young, good looking age range. No, I think you got me wrong there, mate. <laughs> uh, R80 is probably going to be on the other side of the board. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with this circuit. This everything seems to be testing out on this. Um, this is where the enable pin is for the disk drive. Uh, I think that's probably working because it's it's actually turning on with the disk drive when you pair it on. There's no shorts around here. This MOSFET's testing okay. Uh, U45. What U45? Um, optical disk drive five load. 5 volt load switch. Uh, that's out of focus, damn it. Uh, yeah, so U45 is fine. Uh, sorry, uh, U45 is uh, optical disk drive 5 volt load switch. Don't know if that's meant to be enabled when it's turned on or or what. But U34 goes into U45. We've got R154, which is a zero ohm resistor. Uh, looks like that's no stuff. Okay. R154 is no stuff. It doesn't say no stuff. Oh, it does. It says empty. Mm. I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, let's test the resistances on here. So we've got uh, come on stabilize forty thousand ohms ish 
on uh, I'm just looking for the capacitor that's near there C240 no Uh, yeah, C two forty eight. Damn it, you son of a biatch. Right, that's ground. Um, and that is... Oh, hang on a minute. We've got... Is that ground? No, it's not. I was touching the... Uh, I was touching the housing on the uh, power input. Right, so we've got... So this seems a little bit weird. 15 million ohms? That don't seem right to me. Let me just double check. Um, morning, Martin. Where in Willing are you from, mate? Yeah, that don't seem quite right to me, but I'm going to double check. Like 15 million ohms seems a little bit out of the ordinary, mate. I'm trying to get it so as I don't touch that thing. Right, well, I'm getting. 500,000 ohms there on that and then on this one it's just yeah oh, hang on yeah 2 million ohms is definitely some sort of a uh, a broken line here, so let me figure out where this goes to. So we've got C two forty one. I'll show the schematic in a minute when I figure it out. Uh, so C two forty one goes to V underscore five PO underscore ODD. But that's reading as two million ohms for me. Whoops. That screen, uh, but on the donor board it's not. On the donor board it's wrong. Uh, it's reading as uh, something different. So V five PO ODD. So it looks like we've got no five volt. Where's V five PO ODD? Where does you go to? I'll just search it. to bring back the new display. Most people didn't want it, mate. Uh, I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking here, to be honest. I do not know where I'm supposed to be looking. Page 36. SMC. It can't be um, V5PO because we're going boot. It's actually booting. 
surely it can't be the main 5 volt power rail. USB stuff, USB stuff, USB stuff, uh, HDMI, not interested. B5PO gated, that's HDMI, not interested. Schematics, right, so we've got 2 million ohms on here, which is yeah, it don't make any sense. Let's have a look on the other side. Let's see if I can work out where the hell it's meant to come from. I think that comes from the S uh, from the uh, SMC, aka the South Bridge. Um, I'm pretty sure that comes from the South Bridge by the look of it. Um, so it's either a safe bridge issue or it's uh, either a safe bridge issue or do you repair controllers? No, mate, I don't. They're not worth my time, to be honest. Uh, give me my SMC. Oi. Uh, actually, let's just have a look. Let me have a look at some of these resistors nearby. R148. Why is HDMI all the way up there? <laughs> okay, that's a bit strange. Unless it's just because it's near to the, uh, the disk drive. I don't know. Uh, it could be this transistor. That one there. <coughs> um, oh, damn it, you're not even on the right screen. Um, yeah, it could be that transistor. I am getting a very odd reading, but I don't know. I'm try changing that transistor, I guess. I'm going to have to try and take it off. Without hot air, unfortunately. So, yeah, low melt solder time. Because well, I could do from underneath the board, but that's going to take too long. So I think low melt solder time on this. But yeah, I think this is, uh, it's either going to be this transistor or going to be ow you son of a bitch why would you burn me it's either going to be the transistor or the SMC because I think that's the only place it goes back to after that uh, as in the south bridge what the hell uh, low melt solder oh that's not low melt solder that's a f I thought I had a little piece of low melt solder there on the uh, thingy. <laughs> no, that's not low melt solder at all. Well, I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm an idiot. Stuffy, let's just use leaded. Can't be asked to find my low melt solder. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to heat up from the other side of the board, stuffy. I think that's probably the best option. Solder sucker worked great. You wouldn't get it in there, mate. It's too tight. That's what she said. Right, so I've got the hot air coming up from under, from the other side of the board. But yeah, this is the only thing that's reading an incorrect value is this transistor or FET and all that. Come on. Just gonna break that leg away. Right, still keep losing freaking connection. Right, let me just pull one of these off um, a donor board. It doesn't matter about the uh, connector on the donor board, I'm not bothered about that. So I don't need to heat up from the bottom. I can just remove the damn thing. Probably going to end up popping a cap. I don't know if I damage that taking it off. It's just surface marks on that transistor. Somebody's you decided to pick it up with the other hand like a cigarette, you do Yeah, I've done that mate. Yeah. Been there. Not very nice. Braver than me. <laughs> 
All right, that's just a flesh wound on there. It's fine. go so let's just pop this board back on the desk a minute I'm going to check my resistance again I hope we get a different reading yeah 40,000 ohms I get 40,000 ohms on that now, I was getting 2 million before. Let's give that a try. Shall we? 40,000 ohms on that transistor. I think the only other thing it can be is the south bridge because I think that's the only other place it goes back to. That's where 5 volts generated. So, that's the only other thing that would really make any sense. But we are getting 40,000 ohms now. Um, the reading before that on this board was 2 million. As if it was just basically open line. So, yeah. I'm not going to put the heat sink or anything on. I just want to see if it sucks in a disc. Just see if it sucks in a disc, and if it does, then I'll turn the, uh, well, then I'll basically get it all set up. Let's just have a look. No. It's still not sucking in a disc. Then again, it is, over, it, it is, I mean, that APU is really, really hot, so I'm going to give it a minute or two. Uh, I'm going to let it cool down and give it a minute. Uh, just outside Wolverhampton, mate. Yeah, so we're reading 2 million ohms, aka 2 mega ohms. Um, but now it is reading 40k, so. Question is, did it do any damage to the disk drive as well? I'm going to let the board cool down though. Um, let's try it now. Nah, nothing. Do we get 5 volts on that when I enable it? Let's have a look. Yeah, we do. Nothing there. And I think the other probe is ground. I think the other pin is ground. Uh, let me just... Uh, let me just give this a permanent ground. So we do get 5 volts on the one side of that transistor. Yeah, 5.13 volts. That's on the bottom pin. Uh, I think that's pin one. Nothing. Okay, we are getting 5 volts there. Is that, is that beep on beep off? Let me just, um, let me just actually put some thermal paste on that to make sure it's not a beep on beep off. Like to make sure that's not turned from uh, fully working to beep on beep on, uh, beep on beep off by changing the transistor. Um, So 
So we just pop some dermal paste on. I don't need to fully clean it up for now, I'll just temporarily get it to a point where I can pair it on. I don't need to completely clean it. I'm not spending much more time on this tonight anyway, because it's getting late. So I'm going to just see if this, make sure this hasn't gone to a beep on beep off since changing that transistor. It shouldn't have done. I am getting 5 volts, but if it's gone beep on beep off, it wouldn't suck in a disc, would it? So, let's just make sure. Let's just be sure. go uh, I did knock a couple of components with the hot air gun but not majorly uh, actually they could probably do with being repositioned yeah I did knock a couple of components there so let's just reposition them so I must have crashed into it with the hot air. That's the problem when you're heating up from the other side of the board. Is you always run that risk because you can't see what you're doing as well. It's only capacitors, but it depends what those capacitors are too. That is one high temperature area. That's a very high temperature area, Jesus Christ. Damn. That can take some heat. <laughs> I'll just replace it with leaded solder just so it can uh, just so it can flow it easier. <clears throat> but damn that area can take some heat. Ah damn it. Son of a bitch. By the way, I meant to do that. Just, uh, 
like that's part of my repair process is knocking components like it's just normal I'm meant to do it it's deliberate don't worry Yep, yeah, all part of the plan. Just wanted to show you what could happen. Like it, it's uh, it's all part of the process, right? You believe me, don't you? <laughs> you believe me? Please believe me. I'm like a cap, I want to fly away And I don't know where my pad is All normal, I see no problem here I'm like a cap, I want to fly away Accidentally deliberate. Accidentally on purpose. Yeah, I'm not spending much more time anyway. It's 2.47am. So I'll carry on with it tomorrow or something. But we'll see. Okay, now it's turning on. But it's not taking a disc. Damn it! So unless he... Well, there's two things it could be. It could be something to do with the safe bridge. Or... It could be... Data related, because I think it needs... I think the disk drive needs to talk to the console to actually pull in. But... I don't actually know. I've never gone that deep into it. So I might have to do some more research on this one. I'm just trying another disk drive just in case he took out something on the disk drive as well. I am getting 5 volts when I enable it. Yeah, it's just not sucking a disk in. Even with my test drive. Well, never mind. Never mind. It's not taking one in, even with my test drive. And no, that wasn't because it was upside down either. Oh, you can't even see the disk drive, never mind. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Something just cut out. Probably too hot. Probably overheating. But yeah, it's not taking in a drive, a disc at all. I'm going to have to do some more research on this one, I think. Um, just because I've never come across this before So on this console, so I don't actually know what could be causing it. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to pretend I do. Um... Yeah, Computer Boot is working on some PS3s at the minute, so if you want to check him out, I highly recommend it. Uh, it was an Xbox One X, uh, was he? Um, didn't get propelled to Jupiter. Ha, <laughs> yeah. It's skill, told you. It's all part of the plan. But yeah, I've been streaming for four and a half hours. I'm going to call it the night. I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm going to hand over to Computer Booter, so I'm going to raid him on uh, Twitch. Uh, if you're on YouTube, it'll automatically forward over to him so yeah highly recommend checking him out and thank you all i really appreciate it um i'll pick this up i might carry on looking at this one on monday um i don't know and that's shut off because it's ain't got an hard drive in that explains it but yeah take it easy everyone thank you all for hanging out i really do appreciate it i will catch you all in the next one 
You're only 23 minutes. No, I've been streaming. He keeps cutting out. I've been streaming for four hours, 36. <laughs> Good night, everyone. No, no, look, PC2. No. Do you need a hard drive to test? Uh, you need a hard drive to pair it on, but you don't need a hard drive to test a disk drive. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Take it easy. Awkward silence while a raid computer booter. Ladies, everyone.